Hold on, episode 96, Critically Unfocused Podcast. We here, we live in effect. Uh, is Blake and Jamal Tyrell uh, decided he wanted to go get a, his, his face done rather than come on here. So, fuck <laughs> him. Um, it is what it is. Salute, man. 96. Yeah. And but also, so, on to what right we were just talking about. about. You really don't. So, do you think it was a thing or not? Bounty Gate. All right. So, first off, I have seen some rumblings. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know the ins and outs of all this stuff, but I've seen some things okay. on Saints related forums that the league basically had no proof of the shit and they just ran with it anyways and hit up people for suspensions and shit when they didn't have proof of bounty gate actually happening. They didn't have proof of people getting paid for doing whatever. All they had was comments from Greg Roman about um take him out the game and shit like that. But that's like that's football talk. Like people yeah, say that's stuff like shit. that yeah, all the time. So um of it being some like large um scheme that was in place that everyone was a part of and was trying to get an extra thousand dollars when they're getting paid millions um to go and hurt somebody like i I'm, I'm i'm having a hard time believing that that actually happened um two part two of this is that i don't think it like people talk about it as if it puts a smear on the saint success but the reality of it is like it doesn't help you win like you still gotta win the game and the fact of the matter is like people are going to play as hard as they can within the rules, period. So, of course, there was a time when receivers come over the middle, you could hit them up top, and that was legal and that was fine. And people would do it all the fucking time if they had the opportunity to do it. Um, they weren't going to go beyond that because that's going to hurt your chances to win the game. Period. Like, like imagine like you try to you try to hit, let's say Brett Favre for example, four times to get him out of the game, and all the hits are illegal, and none of them take him out. Now, what have you done? Nothing, you still fucking them up. No, but what have you done? If all the hits are illegal, oh, you get four penalties big ass penalties that probably up. gave them at least two touchdowns. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, at least so, yeah, for sure, four drive extending opportunities for sure. So, like, but I, I'm telling you, like, this always pisses me off because, like, nobody ever talks about the fact that they were running a 45 year old quarterback on fucking bootlegs and just leaving him butt naked to get hit by all these defensive linemen. <laughs> Everyone wants to talk about, oh, it was Bounty Gate. Look what they did to him. I'm like, bro, why was he outside the pocket? Why did he have the ball that long? Hey, Kurt Warner that's too. funny because when you see the when you see those highlights, that is funny. It is like Favre just running around and just getting fucking. What are we doing? Stuff. All right, you got some points. I give you that. You ain't never seen football pants be saggy on someone's ass, but he had the hate. Well, all right, <laughs> dude, you guys were fucking him up. But no, nah, it's just some of them hits. They they look like they had a little extra something on them. They're yeah, I, it's, that's it. Yeah, I, man, it's football. Yeah, it could be. Could be. You know? then, look, everyone wants to talk about what we did to Vernon Davis, but no one talks about what Deshaun Golton was doing to us. Nobody fucking cares because there wasn't bounty gate talks about the 49ers, <laughs> but like they have the same conversation about like, oh fuck them up when you're out there. Hit Jimmy Graham in the fucking head. But nobody cared. <laughs> it's all good though. Double standards. I am new to this. Not new to this. I, to this. I just know there's like there's like three there's like two hits where like two of you guys like two Saints players like pick up Brett Favre and like slam him together, and there's another one where I swear he got like German suplex. It's like yo, that's and? that's bounty gate. No, it's not. It's a hard hit on the quarterback. <laughs> not nah, that it looked a little extra, but you know you got some points, man. It's hey, playoff they, football, bro. If, if they didn't have no proof, man, you're right. So like if they really didn't have like no. Oh shit. If they didn't have no hard concrete evidence, then like why couldn't you guys think you guys could like appeal like that suspension? But I guess like if Roger Goodell in the league was Roger, yeah. yeah. If Roger says it's it, it's it. There's no appealing when Roger gives you a suspension. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Yeah, they they when they make Tom Brady miss time for like the flake gate and all that shit, like there ain't no time. You can't do nothing about that shit. He's it. Oh yeah, he did. How many games did Brady get suspended for? I don't know, but I I mean I I know his money involved too. Dude, that was wow. I forgot Tom Brady got suspended for that. Cause that was like that happened when they were like going against the Colts, right? Yeah. The Andrew Luck when they hung the banner of like AFC championship team playing, whatever. Damn. That Dude, Andrew Luck episode. seems like so long ago. <laughs> when did Andrew Luck retire? He's probably been gone like what about four years now, maybe? It was like it was like twenty fifteen or something. I don't know. Damn. 
I'll never forget that day because I remember we were doing our fantasy football draft at uh, Allen's Brothers, and then Michael just drafted him. That like twenty minutes later, we got the on ESPN. It was like he retired. That shit was hilarious. Did y'all let him run it back, or that was just it? No, that was, well, we were already past that round, so like yeah, Michael just have to take another quarterback later. It really isn't. That's that's not the worst thing that could happen. Like if you took like an R running back in the first round and they retired, that's probably more damaging than yeah. Andrew like Luck. if fucking Adrian Peterson retired yeah. and you took him one overall, uh, that would fucking suck. But that'd uh, be pretty bad. Yeah, damn man. Nah, shout out to Bounty Gate, man. Mm-mm. Allegedly. Yeah, I mean, go get yourself a ring, man. Let's just uh, make that happen. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. Where, what year did you guys win it? 08, 09? Two, uh, 2009 season, the Super Bowl happened in 2010. Okay, 2009. Oh, because so the next year, that's when the Packers won the Super Bowl, right? I think so, the, yeah. Okay. Dude, the Packers won the Super Bowl in 2010. Like, you know, Why is there an apostrophe in LeBron on here? Where? Isn't there always a, a apostrophe for LeBron's name? No. It's not French or nothing. His mom made that shit up. Uh-uh. That's why. Hey, speaking of the Packers, who do you think has the leverage in the uh, Aaron Rodgers situation? The Packers or the Jets? Um, nobody. Honestly, I think it's a stalemate because the Jets got to inherit a big ass contract. They're also getting Aaron Rodgers from it. Um, the Jets also do not have to take Aaron Rodgers. They probably want him, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like there there is a, probably a price that both of them should recognize. And that should be it. I don't think the Jets should really have to send any players that way. Probably should just be picks. I think two first is probably a fair price. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just do that. Because at the end of the day, like you're not taking Rodgers to as a piece to build upon. You're taking him and you're trying to go get a Super Bowl right now. So send two first because you're not going to need those first. You don't want a bowl. Like that's how you should be thinking if the Jets. Like fuck them first. Hell yeah. And like whatever. Like if shit goes the way we want to go, those those picks will be like twenty nine through thirty two or something anyway. Yeah. So who cares? Thirty two, only thirty two. Yeah. <laughs> thirty two or thirty one. Yeah. No, the, you gotta you gotta take you gotta do that trade with the idea that you are winning the bowl this year. We're not playing in the bowl. We're not um, getting to the championship round and doing a good game against Patrick Mahomes. We are winning the fucking bowl. So send those picks and do what you think you're about to do. When do you think it, something happens if it does? That's the well, hard part because do you think in my mind, happens? it should be done by now. That's so, what I was thinking. Like if whatever – we, I mean, it, it's, it's going to say a lot when the compensation gets decided and it's done and they send whatever. Um, then we'll kind of get an idea of like what the holdup was. But, um, yeah, I, I in my mind, it should have been done already. Like I, I don't know what else the package is like. If they're asking for more than two firsts, like it's like uh he's like 37, bro. Like yeah, he's fucking he's old, old, man. And yeah, it's like, like, you know. He is he is like one year removed from back to back MVP. So mm-hmm. is, we are getting one of the best quarterbacks in the game, like without a doubt. Um yeah. but I don't feel like there's a price higher than two firsts you can go for. Unless like maybe maybe they're bickering over like, okay, we want two first and a fourth, and the pack and the Jets are like no, nah, we can give you a fifth, and they, like that's someone's just playing stalemate on that. Like maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I wonder if it's like something with like uh, because I know like if you trade a player, especially like I know he got like such a high cap hit. Like, I wonder if they're kind of trying to figure out like salaries to match up for like trades and stuff, or if like if his cap hit is like fifty five, like how much do we have to pay versus how so, much you? So have from to what pay I for? saw, um, just based on how his money is allocated, uh, this yeah, is like ESPN and Carl was reading this earlier this week. He's he's due like sixty million or something like this year, That's but crazy. regardless, if the Packers trade him, money. like I think they're on the books for like fifty four million of it. So, Woo. oh, regardless, yeah, they, yeah, there's nothing they can do about it. So the Jets are are in a great spot once they get him. Oh, that's um, good. If the people hanging that. out out there, that like they can like go spend that money and add them. That's the thing. It's like I feel like this is kind of holding up their free agency. I don't know who's left. I mean, so much shit is. I just happen. saw a list of names, uh, and they don't really need much. To be honest, like they're 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 basically good everywhere, besides quarterback. Low key, I know. Uh, I seen what CJ Gardner Johnson still available. Oh, hey, the Titans might release uh Kevin Byer because I guess they approached him today about taking a pay cut. That's I think a cheap he's, ass team. Yeah, like, cause I think he's due like almost like about thirteen million, and he doesn't want to take a pay cut, so it looks like they're probably gonna drop him. 
Uh, he's been like he's been like a two or three time All Pro. Like he's one of the better safeties in the league. That team is cheap as hell. They are they got rid of Taylor Lewan earlier this offseason. They're trying to get rid of uh Derrick Henry or find somebody who wants to take on his money. Um Tannehill is probably cooked. About to go play Malik Willis. Yeah, I had seen um what do you think what do you think uh proper trade compensation for Derrick Henry is at his age? Like a third or fourth, maybe? <laughs> That's tough. That is tough. Cause so you got to think like if you're trading for Derrick Henry, you're not a team who is trying to find an identity. You're a team who feels like they're running back away from doing something. Yeah. Like it, it, it would have been like Tampa last year. Um, and at Ooh, that or, point, like you basically, tra- uh, I guess I guess Buffalo if they're if they're going to use him that way. But it's like I don't feel like yeah. they're going to Tampa. Keep, keep um, good. when they were doing their thing, like they had a good running game. Um. So yeah, it's like you you feel like you're trading for a Super Bowl at that point, where that's where prices get wonky. It's like you can't like it, if they want a second, and you feel like Derrick Henry's going to be the, the piece that gets you to the bowl, then like the second's easy. But if I don't know, like if it's the let's say the Saints trader for him, Derrick Henry's not going to change our outcome. Like, and that's not, not saying nothing bad about him, um, but reality is of like where we are in the roster. Like maybe we go from nine wins to ten wins, yeah, or like eleven or something, yeah, yeah. But that's not going to get us to a bowl. So, like we're even with all the things that they've lost, like the Eagles probably are still better than us at that point. So, is I know they just signed back a uh, Darius Slay. They they got they oh, kept yeah. him and uh, Bradbury. So yeah, it, it's like I I don't know. Like it's very situational. Like if if. If you could be like the let's say the Cowboys and yeah. um somehow the Titans hold that salary and you pick up Derrick Henry for like a fourth or a third, yeah, you're out of here. That'd be fucking crazy. Derrick Hell Henry yeah. and Tony Pollard. Yeah. I do think last year was like the first year we've seen a Derrick Henry where it looks like he's not like the biggest and fastest person on the field at all times. Mm-hmm. And that that's that was a sight. <laughs> yeah. Cause like he was still really good last year, of course. <laughs> But yeah, like he didn't he look was like up there for scrimmage, like number three for scrimmage or something. Yeah, he didn't look like he had like the the fucking the star in Mario. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have the fear in your heart every time you got the ball. It's gonna be a 97 yard run. Yeah, no, I, I seen him get smacked a few times last year. I saw him get fucking popped last year. <laughs> yeah, I seen him get popped a few times. And I was like, oh wow, because I know the the first person I seen smack him was Quincy Williams, uh, Quentin Williams' brother on the Jets. I was like, because I'd never seen Derrick Henry get like smacked like that. I tweeted one of them, but I think it might have been the playoffs the year before when he came back with the screws in his foot. Yeah, yeah, I remember the week. I think it was Shaquille Quarterman on our team. He fucking smacked him on the sideline and he fumbled, like the ball just popped straight up in the air. That like, don't even sound like a real person. <laughs> it does sound like a man, a man <laughs> generated rookie. But yeah, actually, it's like a hometown guy too. I think he's actually from Jacksonville. But yeah, like that was the first time. Like man, he was Derrick Henry. I, do you think he might be like the last running back? So like probably might maybe get in the Hall of Fame for a while. Ooh, I mean, I mean, I, I don't. I, mm. It's not like running backs don't be having like long runs like that anymore. Well, so the, the thing is, like with that, like the you, you're the bar is going to change for what a Hall of Fame running back is. That's true. That's true. That's true. So you you won't be able to keep judging them against like Adrian Peterson's, Walter Payton's, and shit like that. You're Lillian Thomas. Like, it's going to change because if the usage is changing. If the lifespan is changing, then how you excel in that position is going to change for what it means to be a Hall of Famer. That's true. But I mean, oh. like Christian McCaffrey's probably going to get in. Yeah. Yeah, he probably. Yeah, he. Yeah, he it'll probably tough. I feel like man, well, Sean they, McCoy they is probably going to get in. But he's he's one of them high usage guys, too. So he's from he's like less than that area. Fuck with Sean McCoy. Why that that shit? He he came. He was going out like uh. Did you see uh Lewis Riddick talking about like what, how he was kind of disappointing him like being like so like openly against like Eric Bieniemy? No. Yeah, he just said he was kind of disappointed because like you know it's already like tough for us to like get jobs and like you're kind of just like because he's on that what's that Fox show he's on? Speak for, for yourself, right? Speak for yourself. Yeah, he's it's on. Just there speak and, now. It's just speak. Oh, for really? When they change that? Uh, when they got the new cast. Like when it's when it changed to Joy, um, Emmanuel Acho, LaShawn McCoy, and the white dude. 
he pretty much just says like yo like you kind of like don't have any like you're just making these claims and there's not like so-called like facts to like your claims that you're saying all this stuff because like there's other players like saying they love him and he knows all this and he calls plays and he'll be good and you're being like so visibly loud because like people are going to take like what you said because you have a big platform you're on fox you have a show and you're a professional athlete so when you tweet stuff about him in such a negative light and you're saying all this disrespectful stuff about him like people are just going to take like your word as law and like you already know it's like it's a problem with like you know diversity and head coaching and the mm-hmm. you know the thing on his back and it's like people are just taking like you'll see like a million people just taking what LaShawn McCoy said as word is all like oh LaShawn McCoy said it so it has to be true and also he just said he was like really disappointed like what LaShawn McCoy said but then like in uh in Eric Bieniemy's uh his interview when he got the job with the uh, the commanders he was talking he, he kind of just like kind of brushed it off and saying like hey you know he's entitled to his own opinion because what he says doesn't control my fate and I'm here now and I want to do what's best for me and my family and if me and the head coach is down the line I it starts here and it proves here. And what he says doesn't have anything to do with my job at the commanders. And I know we you know, had him. I know we had him for a little bit in Kansas city and maybe things that turn out the way he might've envisioned maybe, or maybe hit me and him had some kind of underlying issues that I might not be fully aware of, but that's in the past now. And I can't do anything here. I'm with Washington. So, but yeah, I just like, that's kind of like some bitch ass shit that like Sean Coy was on, but I feel like I, LaShawn- I see how it could be framed that way. But at the same time, it's like, I, I get like, if you're he was at the end of his career, he's a veteran. He didn't seen a lot of different rooms at that point. Like he didn't seen like what the Eagles looked like under Andy Reid and like mm-hmm. um I think what Doug Peterson probably was the OC there during yep. that time. Yep. So I mean he's he's seen that look, he's seen whatever's going on in Buffalo at the time. He's also productive out there. And if he honestly felt like the dude wasn't up to snuff while he was there in Kansas City, like yeah, I mean I it's it's unfortunate that you speaking on it like adds fuel to what may be a fire that's not fair. Um, but it, this is, we gotta like, this is one of the most bizarre situations period of like success as an OC, um, and what that turns into. So something isn't adding up. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's definitely weird. It's not just, I mean, there's, there is absolutely a disparity when it comes to like being offensive coordinators and head coaches in the NFL, when it comes to, uh, black men, like with this, it's just not something that like really translates well, but this this is like beyond the pale so at this point like i i mean i've said it on here multiple times i feel like there is something else going on um and not to say like what LaShawn mccoy said is all gospel because like there has been plenty um of comments from him about his time in kansas city that just like points to him kind of being salty about it um yeah like he was older he's been in, he's been in a Andy, like coaching situation before so he knows what those OCs are supposed to look like and he feel like eric bm wasn't that and like yeah i mean it is what it is <laughs> like I hope, I hope he does well though. I mean, the commander shit like they who they just picked up another quarterback um to go with Sam uh Sam Howell. They, they I, saw they signed somebody. I thought their guy just left. I know Taylor Heineke signed with the Taylor Heineke left. He went to nah, Atlanta, they just signed say, somebody, right? bro. Hold on. I think they might be a sneaky play for Lamar. Fuck that. Maybe after the team too. Do you think they're really gonna sell that team? Yeah, they uh the Snyder's then moved out and everything. Like they're not they're not um they're not. Oh there no shit more. for real? Yeah. Bezos about to cop that shit, huh? Bezos? Uh maybe, but shit, who knows? I mean, like is they're talking I mean, if if let's say Bezos is looking at the NBA as a better opportunity or something. I don't know. Oh, they signed Jacoby Brissett. Oh, okay. Hey, Jacoby Brissett played like kind of straight last year. No, he, I mean, yeah, he's fine as a stopgap. You ain't gonna worry about that, especially yeah. for that team, what they got going on. So they're not gonna be they're not gonna be any worse than they were last year with him. So, ooh, what you think about y'all side of Jamal Williams? Out of here. Um, hopefully, Alvin Kamara is able to play the whole season. <laughs> Shout out! Oh uh, yeah, he got the legal shit, huh? Was it Clark County PD? Is that Las Vegas? Yeah. Um, <laughs> hopefully, y'all just uh, relax a little bit and just we could do some off season. Uh, Picking up trash or whatever, <laughs> but if we get that tandem going, the the uh, thunder and lightning between them two, that could be a good tandem. Be out of here. Saints always do good with uh, running back groups. Maybe Pierre Thomas, Darren Sproles. That mix up that was solid. Michael, Mike, my, uh, Mark Ingram. We had that group. Yeah, yeah, We're getting it done. So, Didn't y'all have a uh, Staley and McAllister back in the day too? 
Yeah. I uh, I came in under uh McAllister and Reggie Bush, so that's a Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Reggie Bush, man, what a name. Honestly, where do you think Alvin Kamari is right now in his career? You think uh he definitely on the decline? Like No. So do you still so last year, what would you have said if you had to rank him like like amongst the other leagues backs, where would you have ranked him? Like top five? Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look. I mean, I feel like let me say who I think is for sure better than him. Uh Chubb is for sure better than him. Okay. I'd agree with that. Um Derek Henry probably is still for sure better than him. I'd say Christian McCaffrey's probably still for sure better than him. Um and then I feel like him, Barkley, and um, Dalvin Cook are probably all right there together. Maybe I'm missing somebody. I think both of those guys might be better than that. But honestly, this is probably what, what you think this may be Alvin Kamara's like not so good year? Well, no. So the, the problem is um, the Saints offense under nice. under Sean Payton. I don't know. The Saints offense under Sean Payton always involved a lot of throws to the running back. We does, I mean, mm-hmm, yeah. In the running back split out wide catch pass too, not just dump off from the backfield. Yeah. Um, we've had not only a change in play calling, a change in head coach, but um terrible quarterback issues. So it's not gonna work the same way it did. And then not to mention him missing time, not to mention us missing a gang of receivers, um, where there's not the same amount of pressure being taken off of him. So it's it's, it's just not gonna work out the same. I don't think he's any worse for it though. I just I mean our team is is worse on offense. It's, it's the end of the day. It's what it is. What it is. Okay. So you don't think he's on the decline? No, I think, think he's, he's probably a worse option in fantasy, though. But yeah, I don't think he's he's a worse player. I'm definitely not fucking with him in fantasy this year. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Jamal Williams got offense, the vulture. All his fucking touchdowns. Our offense is wild, fucking volatile. It's the reason our quarterback's gonna stay on the field, bro. Like the motherfuckers is getting hurt. Like that's that's that don't happen just because just because like <laughs> they're getting hit. I thought, man, like I know y'all used to always have like one of like the best lines, but I guess you guys did lose Teron Armstead. Like he was always. It is good. still good, but if the play calling is telling folks to stand back there for however fucking long yeah, before they get rid of the true. ball, like yeah. what you gonna do? Yeah, now nah, yeah, them hits add up too. Yeah, Trevor yeah. Penning missed most of the year last year too. So, was that the rookie? Yeah, Mister Mister got the hands for you. Yeah, that's funny. See, see, looking to start the season. Looking to start the season. Is he looking to start the season? You saying? No, I'm asking. Yeah, like not like start, but like like what was his injury? Was his injury late bad? Is he gonna miss time this year? Like I don't fucking know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But yeah, I mean, he was a first round pick, so hopefully he's back this year, healthy, keeping his hands to himself until it's game day, um, and we can just get on down the road with it. I'm trying to think, man. Uh, I'm trying to think of another back. Would you Would you rather have right now? Uh. Kenneth Walker the third. Yeah. You rather have Kamar over him? Yes. Fuck no. Are you serious? Yeah. At least I know Kam- I know Kamar is like a dual threat when he's healthy. And he can run with power. The man scored six touchdowns in one fucking game. Who else done that? Christmas cleats on. You know, he got fine for that too, which is trash. All right. Crazy. I don't I don't know if I'd agree with that one, but I think that's close, maybe. Uh DeAndre Swift. Kamara. Okay. Travis Etienne. Kamara. Shout out, shout out to y'all, though. Like, what y'all got going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's close. It's close. It's close. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know one guy had uh, four touchdowns last year to to nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hey, one scoring year. matters. Scoring okay. matters. Yeah, That's okay. cool. One year. Got you. Hey, man. Shout out to y'all, though, man. Mm-hmm. Ooh, was he, how how excited about you with, with the car? The car news was this week, right? The who news? The car. Derek what? Carr. That was last week. Was that last week? Did we talk about that? Y'all probably didn't, because you only like bringing up same shit when it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts, man? Go ahead, go ahead and talk about Derek Carr eating at Chipotle. I know you want to. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that that's insane. That's mm-hmm. that's not a good look. But not like that. Uh-huh. Like, what what you think? We out of here, man. We got nine games last year with Andy fucking Dalton. Like, we out of here. Even when we showed you the the graphic of the stats being pretty similar, I'm not worried about that. He had okay. he had problems with dudes in on the Raiders who did not want to win, and he had an ass defense down there, bro. Defense was horrible. Our defense is top twelve. 
Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, I'll probably go give you a little more credit now. It's like top yeah. or some shit. Like I'm saying. So what are you doing? What are you talking about? Just, so what would you say to somebody about? Hmm, he's getting older, and he might be going to a worse situation. What is older? He's still in his twenties, ain't he? Eric Carr. How old is he? Nigga, hell no. He's got to be like thirty three, maybe thirty two. How that ain't old for an NFL quarterback? We talking about Aaron Rodgers versus two first round picks. He's thirty seven. Nigga, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. Tom Brady just left at forty five. What are we talking about? He ain't old. He ain't. He just looked. How old is he? All right, hold on. You just, you, what's I'm, you typing? No, nah, I'm about He's, to. Uh, I was. I was sending Donnie the link. But the. Oh. Uh, yeah. Fuck Donnie. But uh, let me see. You, know, like you don't know what we have a guest on, and then we just invite guests. <laughs> but yeah, I guess might have replaced Tyra permanently. All right, let's see how uh, old Derek Carr is. Derek Carr is. Should I get to other talks before he comes on, or like? Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be whatever. He was born in damn. He was born in nineteen ninety one. Oh damn, yeah. So he's thirty one. Yeah, be 32. he's gang. Yeah, he'll be, this thing is my age. Yeah, my <laughs> age. <laughs> yeah. All right, never mind. All right then. What are yeah, we talking about? Damn, I feel like uh, I'll be one to call athletes old so much now because we're like, damn, like now nah, we be the same age as some of these athletes now. It's got to, it's, you got to, you got to, it's relative. If that's a running back, that's old as shit. If that's a that's quarterback, true. it's that's cool. True, that's the true. kicker is cool. Punter is cool. You're right. Yeah, damn. It's crazy, man. Cause I feel like, I feel like we were growing up. Running backs used to like play so much longer. Yeah. If, if that's your shooting guard, you better be ready to win right now. <laughs> <laughs> as a center, you got a little bit. I feel like Lyman will play a long ass time. They can't. T- I mean, yeah. Look at, uh, Jason Kelsey said he's coming back. Got another one in him for fifteen million, guaranteed. Yeah, damn man, that's that's insane. Oh uh, well, man, I can't wait for football now, man. That's football's easily the best sport, dude. I swear, that's not even close. Where do you think Lamar end up? He's the Washington. What else do you think? I think Washington. Washington, Washington was a sneaky one. I was kind of thinking about Baltimore adoption still. Yeah, I do think like I I'm leaning like 55, 60 percent Baltimore, and I was thinking like maybe like fifteen percent of the Commanders. And hey, what's another team? I was uh, Indianapolis thought they missed out on the number one overall pick. Oh yeah, I don't want him in fucking division, man. But now nah, you, you're right. There's one no one's saying though, Seattle. They just uh, re-upped on Gino, though. So? They got they have two first-round picks right now in this draft. Yeah, no, you you, you got a point. But let's say, like, let's say rather than um, them go through that tender, they work out a deal with the Ravens where it's like, hey, uh, we'll send you the higher of the first-round picks and Gino. So that, that way you have a quarterback right now for this year. Um, you can use that other pick to get you a defensive player, whatever the fuck you want to do as the Ravens. Yeah. <coughs> we get back Lamar. We use the second for, uh, pick to draft another weapon, and we go right now because Pete Carroll is 79 years old and needs to win tomorrow. That would be – yeah, damn. Oh, yeah, he is he the oldest coach in the league? Uh, I think by far. Yeah, because I remember I was like super surprised when I found out he was hella older than Bill Belichick. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, he's older than Bill Cower. Bill Cowher ain't coaching, though. I know, but I'm just saying, like, he's been out the game for a long-ass time, and he retired. He's probably like, let's see how old Jimmy Johnson is. I think they're probably a similar age. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Harry Bradshaw. Jimmy Johnson is 79. Pete Carroll is. He's 79, too, or something, isn't he? I just said 79. He's 71. Oh, Pete Carroll, 71? Yeah. See how old he is, man. He'll be older than 79, then. He's 74. Him and Pete Carroll's in high school at the same time. Jeez. He's born in 1948. He was born in what year? 1948. God damn. Man, he just... I dropped my damn phone. These people be old as hell. Let me be up there. All right. 
Hold on. So we got some shit at the top of this list right here, man. I got to tell you about what the fuck happened to No Jumper. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me. All right, man. So pandemic time 2020, um, No Jumper took a shift. It, it used to be the channel where um, you would see all of these people who were like starting to buzz on SoundCloud come and get their first interview, and then they would kind of blow up from there. Um, pandemic time hit. They had to take a turn and start becoming like content producers rather than just an interview platform. When that happened, Adam brought in um, at first AD for an interview. Then he had AD start showing up on like uh, the No Jumper show, which was like the only podcast that they had over there at the time. Yeah. And then he gave AD his own show. Um, shit grew. AD brought in his homie T Rail. AD brought in Duno. Um, at the end of the day, it took the fuck off. They became like the show to watch over there. Um, no Jumper blew up and started like becoming this platform that was like just heavy involved like in LA culture as a whole. Yeah. Uh, multiple classic Draco interviews up there. Um RIP. RIP. Yeah, Stink Team, uh Baby Stone Gorillas, all of them like was running through there all the fucking time. Just like um every anything that they did, you saw it on that channel. Time goes by like another like two years up until this point, really. Um and they've they've grown out, they've moved to a new location. Um and they've kind of ran out of people to interview. And like I said on here before when Winston was on here, nobody else will kind of do interviews with Adam. And AD and T Rel have kind of like ran through all the connections they have as far as interviews go too. So things have kind of started slowing down in a sense. It's getting stagnant. Getting a little stagnant, right? It's getting a little stagnant. So Adam decides to start trying to shake shit up. And the way he goes about doing that. My recently is, or? Uh, this has probably been like the last like six months. Um, okay. He brought in this dude, Danny Mullen, who's like just this fucking edge lord who we were talking about before. We like pooped on a Martin Luther King Memorial and comp and uh, shit like that. And yeah. just does all types of shit for reactions on the internet. Um, and then just recently he started interviewing like these red pill people um, and then had these people who get on YouTube and just say wild shit like about um, society and stuff like that and get racist labels put on them and shit like that because the shit that they say is racist at times and whatnot. Um, I've seen he interviewed a neo-Nazi like recently. Yeah, I've Jordan Peterson up like there that. debating Destiny. Um, he had some chick on there who like dresses like, I don't know, fucking substitute teacher like about the red pill movement and shit. Um, either way, so it's it's just divulged from hip hop, and he's like it like has panels and shit with like porn stars and stuff because mm. that's the industry he's in. So he's kind of like, um, he's he's doing things that get clicks, but at the same time, platforming shit that is not necessarily about hip hop. When No Jumper is like at its foundation was supposed to be about hip hop, I guess yeah. it's his thing, so it can be about whatever he wants it to be about. Um, but obviously, like if you got a bunch of black and brown people up there. Um, they're probably gonna take issue with some of that. Like it's it's some smuttery. Period. Yeah, it's, it's nasty. Like like we don't want to be no like, we don't want to be no part of that shit like that. Yeah, exactly. So, um, first on one of his panels where he has um Danny Mullen and some trans women on there, um, he exposes his man's house phone supposed to be like his best friend who has been like basically there for no jumpers blow up from an interview platform to a podcast platform. Uh, he's been th- through the whole entire thing with them. He exposes his actions with the trans woman and shit like that. Oh, all the so other hosts. Are- I saw that. So that so that would do. So the guy that he tried to expose for messing with like trans women, that's the that was like his best friend. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Okay, houseboat right. man. Montague. That's kind of why would you do that to like your best friend? That's kind of grimy. So he didn't what he didn't do it, but he invited a woman up the, the trans woman when he probably knew that they had a history together. Is uh, she did the shit, uh, but he I told him to, he told him to cut cut the shit out, but they missed one of the edits, uh, and so it went out anyways. But it's like if you're the boss and that's your platform, that's on you, and especially yeah, when that's your man's, is. like that's double on you. That's nasty. You should have known better. Yeah, that's you should have known better than have her up there. Period. Yeah, but that's not something he wanted to talk about. Um, it's disgusting. So all the like AD T Rail Duno, they uh, they're all cool with house phone and like they weren't fucking with that and that already made things tense and of then course yeah once the neo-nazi interview happened that made shit doubly tense um Hell yeah of course so. 
and then um Adam, I guess, like talked off to I don't know, you know, you know who Lush One is? No, nah, I've been hearing that name a lot. Like, was that the white guy? I seen it was a, it was a white dude, right? Yeah. Okay. Um so Lush Lush is um He fired him live on air or something, right? He fired him live on air, but Lush is like a big figure in battle rap. Um he's known like I think like King of the Die, he has his only GTX, but he'll host battles and like he does like these little like I funny free self at the start of battles and shit like that. They're, I'll be I'll be laughing at him or whatever. Yeah. Um he's a he's a cool dude either way. But um Lush has been up there for probably like a year because he started a podcast up there with Disaster. Disaster uh dipped and went to Lebanon or whatever, and they just started having Lush to come on other shows and shit like that since then. Um but oh, he like said some shit to Lush about like Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Battle Rap Disaster, yeah. Um but Adam said some shit to Lush about like basically kind of hating on AD, like he didn't expect um, AD's like thing to like grow like that at, at No Jumper. Yeah. So um, he just like I, he said like some slight hating shit. It wasn't nothing serious, but it's like it's not nothing that Lush was supposed to repeat. And then Lush went and ran his mouth to a fucking like No Jumper Discord super groupie, who then ran that shit back to AD, and then that created more tension. Um, and that's how come Adam fired Lush because like. Lush repeated what Adam said. Um, what did and, he say? Well, basically, what I was saying that that basically like oh, uh, okay. he didn't expect eighty to have the success that he's had. And, like now he's having oh. to deal with the shit and all this stuff. Okay. Please. So, um, eighty confronts Adam about how he went about handling the Lush thing, um, and he's basically like. Adam, like, you're not taking any accountability for this shit. And it's just like, you do this all the time. Like, you just need to take accountability for this shit. Like, stop being a, a pussy about it. Just like, man up or whatever. Um, and Adam fires AD from the Tuesday show, which is the No Jumper podcast. Mm-hmm. And at that point, they're like, because T Rell and AD are in lockstep. That's what Fig Munity and all that shit. Because uh, yeah. AD has a community podcast. T Rell got uh, back on Fig. And they're both like, yo, we're just, we're just fucking done. And they, they quit and they're out. And Duno comes with them. And Duno's like, Duno's fucking popping like in, in the, with the Mexican community in LA and shit like that. Yeah, He's yeah. on uh, their radio station down there in the mornings. Yeah. Um, So they, they all pull out in the, like, just like, yeah, this week, like it's, it's AD, T-Rail, Duno, uh, and Smack all left no jumper. And that's been a large part of their content creation for the last like two years. I feel like like those are probably the people I see whenever I see those videos. Like when yeah. I see those like clips of no jumper like content on because like, you're probably Twitter. seeing shit from the, at the end of the day, which is like the yeah. show I, I was telling y'all to fuck with for a long time. Now that show you have been talking about that shit forever, yeah, yeah, that show is was fire. It's gone now though. I get but. AD and T Rail mixed up. Which one is the dude that uh is AD the one that like was he finna fight? What's the guy that fought China Mac? AD. Okay, you all got one right. arm. Okay, all right. Oh shit, I didn't notice that. And he's always wearing orange. <laughs> he really got one arm. Uh, he has one arm that works. He had a motorcycle accident, so now only one arm works. But he was uh, he was always with Tyga for like a long ass time. Um, uh, and then they had a falling out. Ah uh, shit. He like basically built the last Kings brand though. Oh okay. Yeah, that's how he moved. He moved from that to having a store with his uh, she basically his wife now, yeah. um, Heather called Sorella. That's all Melrose too, but they're big in that. But yeah, man, that shit, that shit fell apart. It was a, it was a fun run, but I feel like Adam like built like this platform of this, this current iteration of it. I think just kind of on a little bit of bullshit though. Cause like, I think he went too hot, like into having like all the game banger shit up there. Cause mm-hmm. that was never going to be sustainable. And I feel like now what's going to happen. Like, I don't know how he's going to stay in the space that he's in right now. Um, I know people don't care about the back end of the porn shit that much. They're probably not going to go fuck with that. Um, and I don't think I know he doesn't care about all the like the 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 alt right type of shit like that either. He just does it because it gets attention. Um, I don't know where he's going to go from here as far as like what he's going to put up there. Like I know like probably once C Mac gets out, he's going to bring him back up there try to do something with him. But that C-Mac. shit might be played oh, out. Oh, five five that guy. Yeah, that shit might be played out. Well, I don't yeah, know. That shit will get old fast. Honestly. Yeah. And it's nothing you want to rely on either. Like he's a schizophrenic. Like not, not not to hate on people with mental issues, something like that. But like, of course not. Of course not. You just like 
Yeah, he's a schizophrenic who drinks OE for breakfast. So I don't know. Like you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> OE and Popeyes. That's that's crazy. That's not a good comment. It is crazy though. Yeah, nah, I didn't notice all that shit was going on until Wednesday hit me and he told me to tell you, yo, light up the, the no jumper pack, not in the school zone though, but Mm-mm. I know you've like been tapped in with that stuff and Yeah, man. Yeah, man. That shit's really in the fire over there. It was a run though. Is Sharp still there? What's up with Sharp? Sharp's still up there. He keep on getting arguments to academics. I don't know what you doing that for, but <laughs> yeah, that dude is funny. Yeah, Sharp so I mean, they got they got Sharp still. They got Flacco still. They got Almighty Suspect. They got Gina. Um, that's about it. Yeah, man. So did like T Rail and Eighty? Do they got like their own shit like now? Like so they... they each had their own podcast, and then they they join them together now to like make themselves like one media platform, and they call that Fig Community World. Um, because yeah. uh, they also That's had tight. like Eighty's manager Pun, mm-hmm. who did his his show called Ace World, um, Ace Ace Boys Worldwide, which is he did a show on Twitch and shit like that, and they always got kicked off of there because they have what's called the Yam Cam, because Pun will be in there. And because he does a lot of DJ shit, so he'll have like yeah. five strippers in there, just like having conversations and whatnot. Puns, 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 funny. People hate on him a lot on the No Jumper subreddit just because like um, he'd be pressing a lot of issues, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially when it comes to Adam. Like he would call Adam a pussy multiple times this week, and no one else will do that. Um, but yeah, the the Yam Cam, uh, it's a site you gotta you gotta check it out. So you gotta right, I'll, one for you. I'll, I'll do some. Uh... <laughs> And this is on uh what Twitch? They put the clips on YouTube too. Okay, all right. I will. I will definitely check this out. I'll do my uh, research. The AM cam. Let me tell you. All right. I will. I will definitely check it out. Uh-huh. Oh shit! Hey, uh, I just seen breaking news. If Donald Trump Zinkles will be gone. arrested at NYC as early as next week. Per reports, that Manhattan DA has a meeting next week with law enforcement. They ain't about to get him. So he's supposed to be arrested. That's right. <laughs> all right. Did you, you, did you, you the over or the under on that? What you want? <laughs> <laughs> you said they didn't. I, I read something today with uh, Vladimir Putin supposed to be arrested for like war crimes and shit. No, he's he has a warrant out from the International Criminal Court. Oh, uh, you think they get him? <laughs> I'll give you a parlay. <laughs> <laughs> parlay on handcuffs issue. Over one and a half handcuffs. Duh, so like, but like, that's like a big, you know, the international, like, International party of you know punishing niggas like they can't get them like what you mean? Yeah, the, I mean he, they, they have to go into Russia and arrest him and take him back out of Russia to take him to Belgium to the the Hague. Uh, the Hague okay, well you take know him to trial you, at the criminal court. When you put it like that, that shit's probably not <laughs> best <happening>. of luck. <laughs> yeah, that's just they can like just run in there, but I guess like you know they don't want like static and shit. So yeah, I mean, shit, shit, anybody can try. Oh shit. <laughs> Hold up. Is that Big Liquor Line 11? Oh. Hey, we are graced by the presence of a legend of the podcast game. Hey, big legend, man. Texas legend. Enough on, on, on the Donnie we was talking about. We got the new Donnie in here. Yeah. Nah, man. We finna add Donnie in here in a few seconds, man. Everybody go check out the go check out uh Donnie, Donnie Lucy Podcast, hanging with the crew. Go check that out. Donnie, I offered. Oh. If, I don't know if you can hear. I offered uh, Jamal a, a parlay on uh, on on Putin and, and Trump getting arrested. He thinks he thinks it might happen. I'm saying I'll take all the bets. Ain't no way. Damn. Nah, like I I thought they was gonna get him, but like when you put it like that, like they physically gotta go into Russia. He ain't gonna come out. I thought they could like just storm the building where he had to go take that dude on like some. All right. Think about this. Socom shit. They got every sanction in the world they can put on him on on that country. Like their money ain't worth shit. They can't buy shit from nobody. He can't really go nowhere. Their passports don't work nowhere. Like damn, for real? They can't. They, yeah. They, oh, it's just bad for them. They got to. Oh they, yeah. After like, all the Ukraine shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They exactly. So like, like, like if they want to like buy like um I don't know like a, let's say a graphics card or some shit. Oh, like that. They gotta like. There we, there we go. Okay. There you go. They gotta have like the graphics card like shipped to like Turkmenistan or some shit like that, and they buy it from somebody in Turkmenistan. They gotta like do multiple hops through everything so that they can't because they can't buy shit directly. So 
none of their shit works. So he's he's not going anywhere, but they they're not gonna go in there because like he's the law in there. What the fuck they gonna do? It's just the same thing. Like like I said, they're not gonna get Trump either. Like they didn't stop his passport yet. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I'd they never... say it's up for him. He's he's the islands. He's gone. He on his uh, Russell Simmons. Oh yeah, I, I'm in Bali. <laughs> That's too fun. Damn. Donnie. Yeah, I just heard him say something. Yeah. What's up? What's good, bro? What's up with you? I'm nothing. It's, it's Friday night. I'm in the house. How you come with you these names, gang? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm I, I'm real big on alliteration. So no, just, that's a good one right there. Yeah. Where's Tyrell? Man, he, he got some stuff going on, man. That's the second time you missed him, man. I think he might not fuck with you, honestly. <laughs> he said it was, it was, it was going to be too dark in here. <laughs> That's crazy. Man. Four dark-skinned niggas on a podcast is not a good podcast, huh? according to him. Well, well, currently, well, I'm currently dark right now because the heat snuck up on... In te- it, this is crazy. In, in Texas, it's hot 10 months out the year. But every year around this time, the heat like sneak up on niggas. Like it'll be like it'll be like 72, 74, and then on a random Wednesday, it's just 95. Nah, hell no. Nah. Yeah. Let, let, let me ask you something as, as a man of Texas down there. What's Do up? you fuck with coleslaw? Because I know that's a that's a common thing they try to hand you at barbecue places. Um, Do you fuck with coleslaw? My I was I I was seven years old and I heard my auntie say. I don't want coleslaw. Why the hell would you give me wet lettuce? And from that point <laughs> forward, I've never had. I've eaten coleslaw before. You know what? You know I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the coleslaw. I eat, I eat raisin canes coleslaw. Bro, I was so mad when I see that shit on my tray. I was like, what? Just, no, no, it's just small enough of a portion to where I'll eat it. But like, I I know mother, but I don't. I'm like, I'm a okay. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you like this. My grandmother is uh, her like signature dish. Mm-hmm. One of her signature dishes was potato salad. All so right. I've had so much potato salad in my life that cold that cold like like a a cold food on my plate. Like be, if it's coleslaw, I don't want that shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like yes. yeah, yeah. Like I've I don't mind coleslaw. It's okay. If Keynes would have asked me if I wanted two breads instead of the coleslaw, I'd have been like, hell yeah, fire that up. Yeah. Or extra or two extra chicken chicken strips. I'll take a half slaw. a chicken strip over the cold flow. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> they put it in like a shooter cup too. Like, bro, what's to do with this? That's crazy. Y'all talking about <laughs> y'all talking about NFL free agency yet? Go ahead. Yeah, we, what you yeah, yeah. Hey, what well, give us some thoughts, man. Well, I'm a I'm a Panthers fan, and like for the first oh. time in like Probably like since like since like that the season where Cam and CMC went to the playoffs and lost to the Saints, CMC's rookie year. Uh, I've been like excited because since like Cam since TJ Watt tore Cam's shoulder off the bone, the bone. It, it's been it's been me. It's been see see. All right, all right. With me when I'm my sports teams, right? I've seen I'm a Celtics fan. I've seen the Celtics win a championship. So like them winning another one in my lifetime is a bonus, right? Mm-hmm. With the Panthers, I'm very reasonable. I'm like, I just want eight wins every year. Because <laughs> I because I understand like like y'all gonna agree with me when I say this. The Carolina Panthers are the NFL's version of the Indiana Pacers, right? So like if the NFL wants to care about the Panthers, the Panthers have to make the NFL care about the Panthers. Just like with the Pacers, if the Pacers want the NBA to give a fuck about the Pacers, they got to, like, make the finals. <laughs> so it's like, with the Panthers, is like, they got to make the playoffs. So, like, we've we've had our three... Our, we, we, we've had two players that, like, outside of the team... The fans of the team, like niggas love it. Steve Smith Sr. and Cam Newton. That's all we've had in t- well, I mean, niggas like Luke Keekly. And you know, there was a couple niggas who like Greg Foster. And Mike I was gonna say uh Jay. Julius Peppers was one of those Julius guys. Pe- J P two, them three. I might be yeah. the magic, bro. It's yeah, yeah, I'm saying Steve <laughs> Smith, Cam Newton, Julius Peppers. That's it. So it's like 
So it was like this offseason has been fun. Uh, I don't, I'm not real sold on Frank Wright, but I like the staff that's built around him. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, like, I'm not pissed off that we lost DJ Moore because DJ, DJ, although DJ Moore like got like 5,000 receiving yards with whoever the fuck at quarterback. Who, like, whoever the fuck at quarterback. Like, I'm not mad that he gone. I am DJ, that DJ Moore is my guy. Yeah, I'm 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 not mad that he go- now if we'd have gave the Bears DJ Moore and Brian Burns, I'd be I'd be sick. <laughs> one one thing to be for sure though, with Frank Wright, um, you're gonna get the most out of your quarterback. You're mm-hmm. gonna figure that shit out. You're gonna get yeah, the and right Josh McCown is the Josh McCown's the quarterback's coach. And oh, he, yeah. that's, a, that's a good room. There's video of him like talking about CJ. So we might be leaning CJ. I think like I think that report, like right after we made the trade, where it was like the GM is open to consider considering trading the number one pick. That's if like somebody's stupid enough to give us what we gave the Bears. I'll <laughs> probably, I mean, I'd take CJ Files, y'all. I wouldn't play around with the Bryce thing because like last, I mean, we saw um Kyler Murray's probably built even bigger than uh Bryce Young is. Mm. Bryce Young, yeah, man, man, they said he was a world class like, athlete too. Like Kyler Murray well, be moving. I'm saying he can't stay on the field though, even at, at his size and him being like built out more than probably Bryce Young is. So it's like Kyler right. Murray do be missing games, yeah. And I asked, the, I Young. asked the like, I asked the Ohio State fan to like keep it real with me because I asked him like, I I was like, will CJ beat have a better have fair better in the NFL than rest in peace <laughs> than Haskins? And they was like, probably. And I was like, I'll take that for four years. I'll take that for like two three years. Like just ab- like above, like a little better than Dwayne Haskins, bro. I don't know what the fuck my brain was on. Where I, like in my mind, Dwayne Haskins Ohio State stats were were um, Cardell Jones Ohio State stats. But Nigga, Dwayne Haskins threw like fifty touchdowns and two picks. Nah, his numbers were crazy. It was like it was fifty touchdowns and eight picks. And I thought, bro, in my mind, for some reason, I thought this is what Cardell Jones did. Cardell Jones had like eight touchdowns and three picks or something. Mm-mm. You know, he's just it's big like- as fuck. That nigga, that that uh national title year, everybody, I, everybody when I at my school on the internet was like, Cardell Jones should go to the draft right now. That's what they were go saying. I remember another that. year, like, cause cause instantly, easily, like Mike Tomlin would have grabbed Cardell Jones in the fourth round just to be a back. Like he would have easily been able to get some money somewhere. Like just off, of, he, he he really just played three games. And he could have just fucked around and had like a. He probably still would be a backup. Like I, he might be a backup if not because I remember he was a backup on the Chargers. Yeah, he was cooking like in the XFL that first year before they shut down because COVID. When he's on, and he's in Washington. Yeah, like he's yeah. going up. Yeah, but I ain't really. I don't know. I don't know, Jamal. What your Jaguars? Do? I ain't really seen much of what y'all been doing. No, I know. Uh, we franchise tagged Evan Ingram. Of shout course. To, uh, shout out to my favorite biracial tight end. Pause, pause. Yeah, that, that, that sounded kind of crazy. Um, I know we re-signed uh, Roy Robertson Harris. I like that. Uh, but you already know, man. It don't even matter because we got Calvin Ridley and he's reinstated. <laughs> Mister FanDuel himself. <laughs> Calvin Ridley really shit is crazy. <laughs> plug and play. We'll we'll get a guy over there. Oh, plug and play. Yeah, it's it's not, you know really. Doug Peterson. You know he keep a good line and knows how to develop and pick guys what he uh, sees. So we can put Ridley. hey. Hey, I'll tell you this. Since you want to uh, be a smart ass, try to make your funny little comment. Uh, what's my man? Cam Robinson. He got hurt. So Walker Little came in at left tackle and he played four games. Didn't allow, he allowed one second, like four starts. And he had Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa in hell. So what's up? Y'all going to have, you going to be cheering for Jason Peters next year and take back all them jokes? Jason Peters, all that's going to be on our team. Hey, Jack they was, said Jason right. Peters wasn't bad once they moved him to guard. He hasn't uh, been bad the whole time you're making fun of him. <laughs> I know it's just funny because he's a little old. Like, yeah, I remember be on him on the team Bills. With, the, with the bees hanging in the Jaguar jersey. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> ain't, ain't Jason Peters like 47? <laughs> yeah, he's hell kicking ass. Nah, yeah, we got Calvin Ridley. It's up. I'm about to be the fakest. I'm about to be acting like I've been liking Calvin, Calvin Ridley. Ridley this whole is time. um the Calvin Ridley has reached the part, the the part where he's like the player. In like Madden 23, like after your first season on franchise mode, when you just go through a free agency and you'd be like, oh shit, I remember when I thought he was going to be good. Let me sign him for two years, $800,000. <laughs> that really was like, nice. His dude, his last, he, are we keeping it above? He carried Julio, Julio's last two decent years. He did. He did. Calvin really is yeah, a smooth, don't want to talk. He's not ready to have that conversation. He's a smooth 77 overall. 
Who? Calvin Ridley. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. This is like, fam, like nigga, if you go on mad right now with him being suspended, he's like an eighty-five. What do you mean a seventy seven? What? What? Yeah. <laughs> Look it up, nigga. I, nigga, I, I was playing Madden. Calvin Ridley is a seventy seven. Nigga, he made the Pro Bowl his last year as a starter. That is he had, he had like what twelve hundred like double digit touchdowns with bum ass Matt Ryan, old Matt Ryan, where he couldn't throw the ball that far. But now Calvin Ridley's a fucking seventy seven overall. That's crazy. He's the mind. Hey, hey, if Trevor Lawrence wasn't under center for Jacksonville Jaguar, I'd sell the farm for Lamar Jackson. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't give a I damn. Think team should. I, don't, I think some te- some teams definitely need to. Do I, it, but. I'm look look. I'm looking at what the Patriots is doing, and I was like, why isn't Bill Belichick in Robert Kraft's office yelling? Give <laughs> yelling. They like, just signed Mike Jasicki today too. I they might Mike Jasicki. They got Juju because yeah, you you don't want to be the team that like. I mean, I keep it what, up being like you don't want to be the team that like does that and then you don't switch the offense to what they had to do him. in in Baltimore for him to have success. Um, and you find out that that doesn't work, and like that that's a big fucking deal. Like honestly, like you just gave up two firsts. Um, and probably paid. $180 million guaranteed for something that doesn't work. Like, like for specific, specifically the Patriots, because they already have like a starting quarterback. So you blew that up for some shit that doesn't work. Um, that's not to say it won't work, but that's a big ass gamble. I just want to, I just want to see what Belichick can do with like a B minus quarterback. Not saying Lamar is a B minus. Cause when like, De- like, I was like, cause when Derek Carr like got released, I was like, what would Belichick do with like Derek Carr? No, I mean, he won three rings with a guy at, at first who the, he basically asked to not do much of anything. He just let the defense win the game for us. Yeah, oh, yeah those defenses so, were carrying. So, so, like, what would, like, it's like, it's like, what would Belichick do with, like, 29 touchdowns and, like, 13 picks at quarterback? He'd pray for that right now. He probably wouldn't <laughs> ask him to do that if, like, that's what he knew he was going to do. Like, you know, if he's going to play that bad, do that many picks, like, he probably wouldn't ask him to throw the ball that much. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that 13 picks is a lot in 2023. It's not a good number. But that's like they, good, they, it's the ratio, yeah. yeah. They lost. I mean, shit. They, they lost their their OC, and like it's probably another two years till he comes back. But uh, <laughs> and they got Bill O'Brien, so I mean, shit, shit should be popping. Should be back to old Patriots style and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think their offense. I do think like because Mac Jones looked good his rookie year, then the second year, obviously last season he looked pretty bad. But it's like you got fucking first time OC ever, Matt Patricia calling that, and we saw that was clearly a fucking disaster. Mm-hmm. Matt Patricia's horrible. Matt Patricia's horrible. Uh, Lions fans don't ever say anything good about him. They they say shit we can't say on here about him. It's crazy. The no, Lions got Dave. They got David Montgomery. Jamal Williams is in New Orleans. Yo, yo, Zeke and Ty Gurley ruined the market for running backs. You think so? Yeah, because like Miles Sanders got four years twenty. We gave him four years for twenty five million. Like probably was, accurate. Like four years ago, that would have been like fifty million or like thirty eight. Like yeah, only like the really only like guys that like you probably consider like top four backs probably get paid like that. Because I know like Nick like Chubb got an extension last year. That kind of money. Say who? Like three guys in the league probably get that kind of money. That's it. As, well, I'm saying like they gave they gave Zeke ninety, and then they gave like but that was a bullshit deal. Everyone knows it's a bullshit deal. Yeah. They gave him nine. Then they gave Ty Gurley like then the Rams gave Ty Gurley fifty seven. Zeke like, had the Deshaun Watson contract to running backs. <laughs> yeah, they gave Zeke ninety. Hey, I I saw that shit seven. earlier though about uh like how much money how much more money Zeke has made like career earnings compared to other running backs like it's a wrap. Yeah, and nobody's he's, touching he, him ever. He's earned, he's earned seventy compared to like I think. Two and three was McCaffrey, McCaffrey. was two like forty seven. Yeah, they something. were like forty, like yeah, like forty five. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was uh, uh, CMC was like four for sixty four. So he was sixteen million. He was sixteen million a year. And yeah, they did. Yeah, they they cashed Zeke. Jerry Jones cashed Zeke out. <laughs> I think that was, that was probably a Dak promise. Like it was like, yo, okay, I'm gonna sign this deal and stay here, but my man's right there. Cash him out. And then man, he man, Zeke was that dude, man. Zeke was nice. I don't even see it. The, the problem that I always have with that is that, like, every time they put a backup in there, they cook too. The line was fucking line. crazy. Yeah, like, no, nah, that line's fucking ridiculous. Not to say Zeke wasn't nice, but it's like, was he that much nicer than, like, nah, the field? Like, nah, Zeke know. was fucking nice. Zeke was fucking nice as fuck. Well. Zeke was the first Zeke. college running back I've ever seen make an Alabama defense look like some crap. 
Zeke was ridiculous. I mean, like, cuz that's when they like whooped that. their ass in the playoffs. Like Zeke that was that was that Ohio State team was ridiculous. They're like all the NFL players on it. But like nigga, it's crazy. There's a uh there was a take like probably a year after the 2016 draft where somebody was like the Cowboys would have been better if they take took Jalen Ramsey at four, and then oh, and Derrick Henry in the second second round. I was like, oh my goodness! <laughs> no, that would have been fucking yeah. I was like, nigga, that I, I was like, oh, that was that's a, that's a Super Bowl team. Imagine if we drafted Lamar Jackson instead of Marcus Davenport. Yeah, he just got a one year too to uh, the Minnesota, right? Davenport. <laughs> Damn, mm-hmm. play, that's fucked up. Wait, so you a Saints fan, right, Blake? Yeah, you're the Saints fan. I don't. I don't hate the Saints. I just hate Drew Brees. Um, we don't have any rivalries in the division outside of the Falcons. Yeah, everyone else. Nobody, is like, like, hey, like, how you doing, brother? Like, <laughs> I don't. As a Panthers fan, I don't really have no rival except for, to hate the Tom Buccaneers. Brady. It's really just Tom Brady. Was, yeah, really, I was gonna say Panthers. I know hate the Buccaneers out here. It's really like Tom Brady and like Von Miller. Oh shit! <laughs> I, oh shit! <laughs> It was like Tom Brady. How do you okay? Let me ask you this then. How do you feel about uh Cam Newton's reaction to that fumble? We going back in time here, but that, that was a big talking point when that happened. They said you put on effort get get on top of the ball. It was it was it was 24 to 10 at that point. I was checked out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so you and Cam were the same spot. I don't know what the fuck we was going. I know, we see the thing about the, the, the thing about the thing about the thing about the Super Bowl is like we scored first, then we never scored again. I got you. <laughs> Then we never scored again. And what kept pissing me off is like Peyton Manning was horrible. <laughs> he mm-hmm. was horrible. He if was Peyton cooked. was like, if Peyton was like playing an average ball, like if he had like two touchdowns in like the half, I was like, oh, okay, okay, they'd be nice. But that nigga was, he was throwing ducks. I was like, Cam, like, can I get, I need you to break out a run. But then I, but then it's like, but then it's like these niggas. That was an all time defense, man. Nigga, that that, that Denver defense. Warrior, Von Miller, fuck out of here. Yeah. Chris Harris Jr. Dude. Dude. <laughs> uh, Derek Wolf, Malik was Jackson got paid because we paid too. him. They had, uh, mm-hmm. they had the running back, not the running backs, the linebackers. Uh, they had Marcus with it and Danny Trevathan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Danny Trevathan. They uh, had, um, Ayanacho. Mm-hmm. Marshall. Uh, the linebacker, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. The Brandon Brandon linebacker, Marshall. Brandon Marshall. Yeah, Brandon Marshall, yep. Yeah. Defensive yeah. Brandon Marshall. Yep, uh, defensive Brandon Marshall. Because, like, everybody was, like, the whole two weeks, people was like, oh, no, 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 Panda's about to spank the Broncos. I said, no, they won't. I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. If we win this game, it's going to be, like, 24-23. It's going to be, like, 21-17. Like, it's not it's, – it's, it's not fit to be no block. Keyshawn picked them, like, 38-12. to 12. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> no, what? no, them niggas is big over there. It's like nah, they not just nah, 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 nah. nah. I would tell you that I like I I wish um this is a I guess sidetrack a little bit like because so the Saints won the Super Bowl like when they, and when they did like I was I'd only been a fan for probably like what like four or five years at that point um and I was I didn't have league pass or a uh, Sunday ticket so like I wasn't watching every single game they played only the nationally televised ones basically. Um, I wish they would have done that shit. Like while wow, like I've been an adult, the shit talking would have been so different. Like <laughs> all of them fucking crazy after that. And man. me, like, like, and me, like I, wouldn't that have, I wouldn't have, start, I wouldn't have started shit talking to if unless we won. Like if we won, I would have talked the biggest shit ever, man. But we lost. I, ain't, I, I, that's when I stopped watching ESPN. Like I stopped. I used to watch ESPN consistently before the Super Bowl loss, and I like took a break for like three months. <laughs> like inconsistent ever since. Damn. Ever since. Oh, yeah. Like, you know what's crazy about the Saints? Like, the Saints have had revolutionary offensive seasons. Oh, and multiple. like Huh? Multiple. 2011, we set the record for like most uh, yards from scrimmage, I think. Nigga, Darren like Sproles had set sense, the record but... for most all purpose yards. Yeah, like 2,300 yeah. all purpose yards. You were fucking crazy that year. And the crazy thing about it is like, there's no, there was no like, other NFL teams trying to duplicate that. Like nobody I, I didn't hear like teams, coaches, nothing. No nobody from that staff was getting hired to hit. I was just like well, I was just like so y'all just going to let Drew Brees and Sean Payton run this offense and not well, it, copy it's, it? Yeah, it, it's like the conversation we had earlier regarding um Eric Bieniemy um where it's like you have the head coach who is the play caller um and is the genius behind the offense and because of that like we've had um 
uh, Lombardi, who's been the OC for a long time. Um, we've had like different like quality control people, quarterback coaches go on to different places, but none of them ever ascend to have the same type of like offensive success that like the Saints had during that era because we had a great quarterback and a head coach who worked well with that quarterback in order to instill his system. Like it, it couldn't produce anything else, but what it produced, like no one else came out of it. Mm-hmm. And I think, <laughs> and I think I like the Derek Carr signing because of fit. I think Derek, I think Derek is Derek himself. He's a, he's a, he's like a real Christian man with like real Christian values. He's going to okay. embrace New Orleans and like the city of New Orleans. Not eating Chipotle. Yeah, that too. I got here, man. Not too much of Chipotle. He's going to embrace <laughs> New Orleans. And I'm not saying you, Blake, but I believe like the city of New Orleans, if like their car gets them to like the NFC championship game, they're going to like be like, they're, they're going to like, they're going to like not yell at him. Yeah, they're like, not going to like, not yell at him. They're going to be like, all right, we're pretty, because cause he's like, he's like the second best quarterback they've ever had. That's unless right. like, unless we count uh, quarterback Aaron Brooks. Uh, hell no! Nah. Now we can hey. be anti-black on this podcast. No, he, he get he get points from me because he played in forces, but that's about it. No, <laughs> that, he don't get points from me from that. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, them shit's laced up, boy. She no, that it. was no. Man, it was, was that was the not nah, that was low key like the the mad m- matchup in my household. Vic versus Aaron Brooks. Oh, Falcons versus Saints. Oh, these would be so fun. Oh, they were so shitty. So. <laughs> I saw them play at like the uh like I went to a Seahawks game when he was their quarterback. I remember like Joe Horn and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was great. God yeah. bless you. Yeah, but that's the same. Their cause the same second best quarterback. He's that's a fact. This season, oh, they're gonna love him this season. No love for I, Arch he Manning. Gonna, he gonna throw like twenty seven. He do shit. He gonna throw like twenty eight touchdowns. Now. They ain't, they ain't had that since since like two thousand eighteen. <laughs> So Archie Manning's name is built entirely off his nuts. No, that's hilarious, but you're exactly right. <laughs> you know what's crazy? My you favorite, my, the funniest thing is like, is like a lot of people, a lot of a lot of uh, niggas online, they fear Arch Manning being good because everybody's going to be like, oh, fuck, another one? Another one? He's probably I mean, is going to be straight, though, because I feel like his, 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 his mind as a football player has got to be like sorted out. Whether or not he has all the physical abilities, that's yet to be seen. But I feel like his his name is going to be around football for a long fucking time. My, my favorite thing, my favorite joke I run with my homies is like Arch Manning is Cooper Manning's son. So if Arch Manning is successful, Cooper Manning for the first time gets to talk a lot of shit amongst his brothers. I, I feel like Peyton and Eli just totally shit on Cooper Manning. I feel like they walk in his house and like open his fridge. And then, and then, like, eat his food, and like put they put their feet on this on this kitchen table. I gotta <laughs> ring the like doorbell, that. but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No Smack rings. his wife on the ass. No rings. <laughs> crazy. Hey, Eli Payton and, and Archie just be shitting on this thing. Like you like that commercial? So I got Ar- you, Ar- and so if Arch if Arch is like a Pro Bowler, oh, he's gonna talk so much shit. <laughs> He's gonna talk. So he's supposed much. to be one of the ones too, man. A neck injury or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, neck. Yeah, they said Kubu was supposed. Was that? Was that? Was that raw? Um, I'm looking at Archie Manning's stats. He has multiple 20 pick seasons, bro. Nigga. <laughs> one, two. Hey. He has four 20 pick seasons. Gumbo Brett Favre. No, nah, this is far worse because he didn't have the touchdowns to go with it. He only has oh, one season where he threw more than 20 touchdowns. <laughs> But yeah, four oh, if you, oh, if you look at those old, if you go, if you go back to like the sixties and the seventies and look at those stats for QBs, oh, you, oh, those stats are terrible. No, but it used to be like just like let's say production was lower. He was turning the bitch over. Like he, <laughs> this man's he's Daniel Jones, bro. He stinks. I think it's David Carr. All right, that, <laughs> no, that's the other card. Never mind. Also, also like another like you know who's uh, overrated? John Elway. John Elway is overrated to me. John Elway, the second Super Bowl definitely put him over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John Elway won an MVP with nineteen with nineteen t- touchdowns and twelve picks, and he ran for like seven touchdowns. And I was like, "Why would you? What? What happened? Did they have the best record in the league? Was is that what happened?" Let me see uh, yeah. right here. All right, yeah. So, so nineteen touchdowns, twelve picks. Um, it wasn't. It, it's this was a. 
Oh, no, this is a 12, 12 uh, game season. Mm-hmm. He, he, 19 touchdowns in 12 games. No, this, this must have been a strike shortened season because this was, yeah, the year before they played 16 games. So he went 8 3 and 1, 19 touchdowns, and 12 picks. Uh, he might have been hurt. I don't know. He's, he's going hard. crazy a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, in the man. 80s? Dan Marino was in the 80s. That it's nigga 87. was like, yeah, no. Nah. That nigga was launching footballs off his helmet. <laughs> like that. You're not wrong. Yeah, Dan Marino was putting up crazy games. numbers like back in the day. Dan Marino, I look. Look, I, I ask Eight, this three, question one. all the time. On, Would man. y'all be happy if they did, like, you know how, like, 2K does all-time teams? If Madden did all-time teams? Like, if you could play with, like, the all-time Falcons, you could just play with Michael Vick. I'm gonna tell I you wish what, they had man. all-time teams for NFL. That's what I'm saying. So they Thank put you. it on there, but I tell you this, I'll probably never, ever see it because I I don't – no one – I mean, shit, I don't know if this is in y'all circle too. No one does play now anymore. Folks don't play head to head like that. Like, yeah, I just do franchise, fucking franchise. franchise. Yeah, yeah, like franchises and leagues. I just, I just, I just, I'd never say see franchise for the achievements. Like Madden Ultimate Team, I'm just like, no, I'm not. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, yeah. two two K play now is as deep as it's ever been with like teams and like a, you can set up in there, but nobody ever plays that shit. Like, yeah, bro, like, I need my career or franchise. That's it. Yeah, unless you like you get into an argument, with somebody's like, yo, play me head up right now. That's how, like the only time that shit ever really pop up, honestly. That's it. We'll never see yeah, that I'm, shit. I'm playing WWE right now. The new one? New one? Yes, that shit's fun. Fire. The last one was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's, this shit is that was a really good My Player mode, actually. I really like the My Player mode a lot. I'm doing that right now. It was really good. There's so much customizable shit. Like you could be in that. You could because you could customize like the way you're like all your like your, your gear, how you walk in, all your entrance stuff, your moves. Like there's hella like there's hella move stuff to like mess with in the creator on there. Like you can get lost in that shit for a minute. Yeah, the uh they limit what I do is like I do because of community creations, like I do, I mainly do universe mode all year. I like get, I like complete my rise or my career, and I'm, I do online every now and then. But what I do is I just go to universe mode and I just make all the, all the wrestling shows that come on during the week. So I do I do SmackDown, NXT, Raw, AEW, New Japan, and ROH. And Are I you get, keeping the shit? Yeah, yeah, fam. It takes me like a full week to set all that shit up. Cause I do like yeah, it's like cause it's like cause it's like I get cause like I get the pay per views, I get all of that shit, I get I get all that shit set up, and uh, I just I run it, and it just be I run it, I do drafts, like I bring people over and shit like this, it just keep you occupied throughout the year and shit like that. Cause like with Madden and Two K, with Madden I go to like they give you like thirty years of franchise mode, I burn through that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do that shit. Oh, shit, it's raining. What the fuck? Um, hold on. I was man, I was looking at some wrestling shit earlier this week. Um, damn, what the fuck was I about to ask? I'll remember now. All right, my fault. Hey, how you feel about Roman Reigns, uh, Donnie? His, I know he's uh, like, I know he's like the guy now. What you mean, like in general, or like just in general? Like, what's your thoughts on him? Yo, I Jeremy love him. Michael. I love him. He Samoans notoriously are only really good at like three things: oh, football, shit. wrestling, and because of Dwayne, like Hollywood. Okay. So, uh, so it's like you, like Roman Reigns is. He looks like. What a re- what a what a sports like what a pre- professional wrestler is. He looks he the part. Yes, the, he looks. Yeah, he's like 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 I don't like Hulk Hogan, but it I it took me a real it took me a long time to realize that I, that Andre the Giant was as big as he was because Hulk Hogan was six seven three fifteen. Niggas don't realize how big that is. You know what I'm saying? So like Roman Reigns is a larger than life figure. Um, I've been I've watched every match every week of his career since he debuted on the main roster. Uh wrestling fans are horrible. You know what I'm saying? Like they're like kind of like selfish. So he was the victim of that. Probably the yes, first he was the the victim. Not nobody else has has had that much vitriol. 
I was at the it, WrestleMania um, where he it was him versus Brock and Seth cashed in. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody was like happy to see Roman in that main event, Mm-mm. but it ended up being one of the greatest moments. Like just like they had a great match, him and Brock did, and then the cash in was like fucking crazy. Like, yeah, what happened was what happened, and it started at Royal Rumble in Philly when Daniel Bryan got eliminated. That was their man. That was oh my Daniel god. Bryan got a, Daniel Bryan had his moment. Got injured, came back, and he got eliminated like very early in the Royal Rumble. And like from that point forward, they took they hijacked the show. Mm-hmm. Nigga, the Rock came out and they boo, boo like it was boo. Then they oh, made then they made Roman have a match with Daniel Bryan to see who was gonna face Brock at WrestleMania, even though the nigga won the Royal Rumble. So it was I'm just like and so and so the what what. I think those fans who still act like that, even though it was eight years ago, don't realize is because AEW exists, all of those people who used to hijack WWE shows go go to AEW shows now. So the mm-hmm. best that Tony Khan did for the E is he took away angry internet wrestling fans away from WWE arenas. Yep. So now... WWE can focus on the WWE universe because that's who's at these shows now. You know what I'm saying? Like early 2015, 2016, 2017, they used to niggas used to just like it'd be it'd be Kansas City and it'd be or St. Louis. And like like a beach ball would just be moving all through the show. <laughs> niggas would just bring beach balls until one pay-per-view, Cesaro was just like, man, fuck all that shit. He went to get it. Like they was playing with the beach ball, doing random chance in the middle of the match, and he got that shit got close to him and he popped that shit. He was like, no more of that shit. Like, no, and from that point forward, that shit stopped. Yep. That shit, I, right. I don't know. Nice. I don't know if some people at venues was like, nah, it was like taking beach balls and shit, but that shit stopped. So they used to hijack shows, but those type of people go to AEW shows now. And like, like prime example, like niggas is like. Niggas is like nobody. Nobody wants to see Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns in the in the main event. They want to see Cody. They want to see Cody Rhodes and Sami Zayn. I'm like nigga. When Cody Rhodes comes out, he gives his belt to a child. To a child, my nigga. Children have signs of Cody Rhodes at at shows. What do you mean? Like my nigga, you're 37. Like you, that your opinion of Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns really it don't matter. matter. It do not matter. Bro. <laughs> this 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 eight year old, this eleven year old, this sixteen year old that cheers Cody every time he comes through. Mm-hmm. No motherfuckers that matter. You no. Like f- now, eight years ago when you would go to these shows and you would yell, yeah, you probably had an effect on on a show on a match. But now, oh hell no, hell no. Hell no! Like these nah, kids, a, nah. I still don't fuck with Daniel Bryan today because of like how over they wanted him back then, and like I just felt like his moveset was like whack as fuck. Like I don't know the goddamn knee and the kicks. Like I don't know, bro. Like yeah, never the, did it for me. Never did it for me. The thing about Dude, I feel like I feel like that about Roman. Like I'm a I'm a super casual. Like I watch the shit rare, rarely. Mm-hmm. I watch pay per views here and there, and just to kind of know what people are talking about on Twitter. And like I don't think like. Obviously, he's got like the superstar look, you know, the size, whatever. He's got like the, the personality, probably. But I just think like him, like actually like wrestling in ring, it's just kind of mid to be honest. I feel like he don't be like, I don't he know, maybe the superhero part. Like, that's what it is. Because like, if, if you figure like Brock is booked the same way as like this unstoppable force, like Roman plays that part well as well. That's that's kind of how you have to look at him. It's not like that he's like extra technical, like uh, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit type of shit. Yeah, he ain't gonna be doing all that. Yeah, he's you don't have a lot of moves, but as just, a wrestler, a as Brock had well. a good, I feel like Brock had like a good move set though when we were like growing up watching Brock. Like, Brock's that's not what he is no he, well, since he's come back as the monster. That's not what he is no more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like to explain it in sports terms, like wrestling wise, Brock is Shaq, he's Shaq. He's like, this is, this is, Brock is gonna like, force. like thirty, like thirty-seven and twenty-seven. Yeah, like every night. If you don't, you're gonna need some extra shit to beat him. Roman yeah. is Tim Duncan as a wrestler. He has all of the intangibles. Now, Roman has way more personality than Tim Duncan has ever had. Tim Duncan is 
ever had. But but like he has all the fundamental. He sells really well. He uh he knows he's good with his timing. He's good. You know what I'm saying? Like he re- you he rarely botches a spot. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? His spear, like his spear, is always crisp. His reversals, his like how he takes pit, like it's just like you know what I'm saying. Everything outside of like the actual technical part of wrestling, he's very very good at. Now when he gets to the technical part of wrestling, he's maybe like a B minus. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is why his move, his finishing moves are like a spear and a punch. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like I think a, that's what it is for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I was for like. Three years, I was like, please give Roman Reigns the jackknife, because I just, I just feel, I just feel like people, like, like people don't realize how powerful he is, and so his move set doesn't like show his power. It just show, it shows his athleticism, but not his power. So I was like, please give Roman like the jackknife or some shit. I think so, they might have put him over a little bit too early too, to be honest. Like they, they like, in. They put him out there against like the the big big dogs, um, like right after the shield broke up, um, and I, people weren't necessarily ready for that. Um, but where where he's yeah. at now with like the bloodline and all that shit, it's it's been phenomenal. Um, how they have him like booked with like Jimmy and Jay Uso next to him, and all the shit they went through with Sami Zayn and everything. Like this, he's he's in his moment right now. I think like like you said, twenty fifteen. Might have been a little bit early for him, but um, we mm. definitely done worked him into a good spot now. Yeah. Also, also like CM Punk kind of, kind of like ruined everything. CM it Punk, like CM Punk, like basically let the cat out of the bag that Vince wanted Roman to be the next star because he was like, I got to make Roman look strong. And so fans was like, Oh, we see where this is going. And so when fans are spoiled with the surprise, they like try to hijack the fucking shows. Um, they had that moment where um, there was that moment where John Cena completely destroyed this nigga on the mic, and he kept calling John Cena a bitch, and that didn't work, even though he won the match a month later. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It took it took him like four years, it took him like three years to finally be able to to deal with John Cena on the mic. You know what I'm saying? He's gotten you know what I'm saying he's gotten better as a mic performer. He's gotten. He's he. I think the tribal chief thing is like he settled into himself, and the what happened when he, he had left during during COVID because you know he has leukemia, mm-hmm. and he was like, I'm not sure with this new virus if I should be wrestling. So he took a break. He probably talked to his doctor and shit like that. But the the reason why this tribal chief thing is working so well is he told Vince. He said, when I come back. I want creative. I want creative. He said, "If I'm gonna come back, I want creative control of my character." And so, and Vince, Vince had to step know, away. Yeah, <laughs> well, that was two years later. But I'm talking about Vince. Like, <laughs> d- you know, what I'm saying him asking that Vince would be like, "All right," because Roman Reigns has main evented at that point. Main evented five WrestleManias. You know what I'm saying? Like he was, in, he was in the five. He's kind of earned the right to be like, nah, let me For control sure. my character. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like, yeah, like if that had been like Dolph Ziggler, Vince would be like, man, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. like Roman Reigns has like, you know what I'm saying? He's earned, he's earned that right. So when I was like, I'm the biggest back, star that y'all have that's gonna be here every night at this point. Right. Like, right. And, and, and then, be every night. Then people forget, be every like night. he's he's taking he, like he's on a part time schedule now. But mm-hmm. fam, when he came back during the pandemic, he was here every week. Mm-hmm. Every week. Every week, risking his health. Every week. Hey uh, so you, you talked about like how he, he was talking to Vince about when he comes back, we gotta talk about Vince's office though. Jamal, I don't know if you ever seen it, but like the man got a fucking T Rex skull on the wall. That's crazy. What? That's in fucking Yes. He I'm it, saying. WWE has like a warehouse with all the like their old like props. Like they have like mm-hmm. a warehouse with like you know the SmackDown fist. Like that's oh, where that is. Fist. It's like a yeah. warehouse in like Stratford or some shit like that. If I had the money, I'd get the fist. And I think they're they're like waiting. I think Triple H is finally gonna like he's he's having all these shows in other countries. I think by twenty twenty five the W like he's gonna like we're gonna get an announcement about the WWE Museum where you can just come see Ooh. all of that shit. I would go see that. You can see like the, the yeah, like, with the big swinging hook. Yeah, yeah. The, the that WWE would be hard. 
like the WWE Museum with probably were probably the Hall of Fame, like a big ass, probably like you know the WWE Hall of Fame area. No, I want to know. Um, shit. I f- what 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 prop? Those Saudi Arabia checks cash out. Yeah, those Saudi Arabia checks gonna cash out, but nah. Like the, the, I'm trying to figure out what prop from uh the hand suit. From the attitude there, when uh, May Young gave birth to a hand, I want to I want to know if the, the hand suit. You remember was, that, Blake? When her yeah. and Mark Henry were a thing, her and Mark Henry were a thing, and she gave birth to a hand, and like a nigga came a out like in a, a hand. hand suit. No, I don't know that. No. <laughs> the Zamboni, the Stone Cold, the Zamboni Stone Cold was riding on. Yeah, the milk need, truck, the, the truck, 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 all yeah. of those things. At least a replica <laughs> of all of those things should be in the WWE Museum. Like not 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 if the actual shit was in there, that'd be crazy. But like a act like like just get a company to make to like craft yeah. the Zamboni. Triple H sledgehammer or two. Yeah. Craft the Zamboni and shit like that. But not like not like I think Roman's Roman's like he's you know what I'm saying, he's doing a lot of he does a lot of like he had, like I said, he has the intangibles. Yeah. So it's like, like he's good. I'll be telling like I I still draw this multiple times, like attitude era. I, I really wasn't there. I, I had a video game from that era, and that was about it. It was like right after that shit ended. Um, I basically only watched SmackDown. So like my favorite wrestlers going up were like RVD and like the Hurricane and Rey Mysterio probably. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah, it was it was a uh, it's all I, like I couldn't stay late enough to watch. Uh, I was Raw the opposite of TV you. In my room. I was the opposite of you. I have UPN, so I just watch Raw. How you so, have UPN? That was the free channel. I don't know. I, I couldn't find it. I don't know. Yeah, that was my mom, black, I don't know. Like, my mom, like, she got like she. My mom's like very like advanced when it comes to technology, so like probably direct the dish was around that time. But she just got that shit. I was watching Star Trek, King of the Hill, and SmackDown. Yeah, that was UPN man eleven. Because mm-hmm. I, I could only stay up like past ten o'clock on weeknights to watch wrestling. I could watch Raw and SmackDown. Other than that, I had to be in bed. Cause mm-hmm. I, my my dad just stay up and watch it with me. Eight thirty, my boy. I was. was I think I've been like nine. Yeah, so I put the TV on zero volume. and was watching SmackDown. I was like, okay, I'll, I'm that, gonna talk to my boy Dimitri down. tomorrow at recess and figure out what they was talking about. But my man <laughs> Hurricane was getting it in. Well, I know he turned the brightness down, and then I'm I learned you learn about the, no uh, brightness. The TV had dials. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I had a I had a I had a small version of the big I had a small version of the big back TV with the fat ass in yeah, my room. The TVs. Big ass TVs. Y'all didn't put the uh like a blanket down in front of your door underneath the crack so like the light from the TV wouldn't get underneath there. Of course. <laughs> you had to, man. Of course. So your parents don't see that light coming from underneath the door. So you think you sleep? Of course. I would I used to <laughs> shit. Wrestling is how I was able to watch us. To watch every season of Burn Notice because after Raw, Burn Notice would pop up. This nigga said Burn Notice. Nigga, but I gotta rewatch it. I don't know. I know what happened, but I don't know what happened. Into the plastic surgery show in Miami. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they saw some shit. Yeah. Y'all remember um, Fastlane with Bill Bellamy? Yeah, I've familiar. seen that movie one time. It ain't no movie. It's a show. It it's had like show? two or three seasons. Yeah, it was on Fox. Oh, that's crazy. I think I do that's, remember that. That's it came out like after Fast and Furious to try to capitalize on that. Um, but basically, like, yeah, it was like him and some hey, other two, dudes. Hey, two or three seasons. Two or three seasons is good money. I no, think man. the third season. It's so it might have been two seasons. The second season got shorted because shit was going bad. <laughs> that was my shit. <laughs> that's great. Y'all got a show that like that y'all like but got canceled. Fastly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm at a uh, Southside is kind of canceled right now. Like they're shopping that around, but that was on uh, Comedy Central. Then HBO picked it up, so it was on HBO Max. But yeah, that's like yeah, yeah. I think most- Southside. I think Southside is good enough to get the. I think it's good enough to get the normal. Like with you know the. Av- I think Southside is good enough to get like a third season, and then Jessica season. Jones, the third season. Daredevil. Well, well, no, no, no. Uh, like a fourth season. Okay. You know, yeah, because yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like if it's, like if it's like more than five, it's kind of like it's kind. It gets yeah, lucky, that's, that's you know? getting lucky. Yeah. Like you gotta like that's that's the best thing about insecure. And like Issa was like, I know when the show's gonna end, and so like five seasons. But that show had like 
that was more of like a serious show with like real like major like plot points of character development. Like Southside's kind of like it's also it's source like, material. It wasn't just yeah, it's like source material. And it, yeah, so it's kind of like they just doing like random different shit, and like you're not really expecting like super big like character growth. They're just kind of doing like random yeah, it could, funny yeah, shit. It's yeah. like a comedy. Like that could go on as, as long as like people are watching and it stays funny and it's entertaining. Like that should go on for like yeah, and, and, and it's not like, and, 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 well, and that shit could be on Amazon. That shit could be. Hey, on Amazon. That plays into another topic I got on here though, right? So like earlier this week, um, I, I random ass movie rewatched the movie The Cookout. I don't know if y'all remember this movie. Um, I haven't seen that shit in over horrible. 15 years. All right. So, rewatch this movie. Um, not really too much to say about the movie itself, but just like the space that it existed in, in that um, there was a certain space for movies of that budget and sort of that genre of like uh, comedies that cost that much to make um, and that were primarily themed around us. Like, made it to the theater for a very long time whereas like nowadays i feel like they don't necessarily exist anymore even when there's like more spaces to release a movie on like where you don't have to necessarily put it in theaters probably cost more money than put it on like netflix or hulu or whatever the fuck else um but just like you're saying like Southside might have outlived it say on wherever it's at um there's multiple ways to put a show out today Mm -hmm. so it doesn't mean something has to die but it's like it tends to be these things just end up dying i I don't get how come a show like like you're saying like Southside that doesn't have like licensed material like it's not like tied to like a Marvel or some shit like that like you know where it's like they yeah. gotta pay to 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 use these characters and shit like that it could it could easily exist like somewhere else than it is right now um, but we like we're talking about it because like we know it's it's that's not what's gonna happen here like it's just probably pooped and gone like if yeah it's, I'm like, like, fucking hoping that. Yeah, yeah now nah, th- yeah, because there's there's streaming services that can you that can use like consistent content that people watch. Like I mean, like, yeah, Godfather of Harlem started out on some bullshit. Now, like it's on a bigger bigger channel. So I mean, like, I gotta shit, get like, like into that show. Like I liked it. Go either it way, good. Yeah, because it's like Southside, Southside, like Paramount Plus. Southside do great on Paramount Plus. Great, great. Because only like, they got. Because they just they got the game. They got the rebrand. They rebranded the game again. Now they got um. Kingstown, Kingstown, yeah. uh, Tulsa King, Yellowstone, Paramount, 1923, 1883. Yeah, it's um, no comedy over there. And then hella, hella Star Trek, and then the Star Trek uh, cartoons that are comedy. But yeah, there's not an actual comedy space over yeah, there. Yeah, they don't have no, real, don't have no comedy shit. Uh, did y'all, uh, have y'all checked out Swarm? What is that? Well, I'll okay, the, there's a clip going around of Chloe Bailey getting her ass cheese clapped. By uh dance and interest, that's, that's the show. Right. That's, that's the right. it's like a short seven episode series. I'm not so watching. D- don't watch the show just go see Cody Baby. No, 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 no. The, okay. the, the clip is on the internet, you can watch it. Is I think it's about like this girl who's like obsessed with like a, a pop star, Beyonce. Billy Eilish is in it too, isn't she? I feel like I've seen people talking about it on Twitter. Paris Jackson is in the show, she ain't getting cheeks smoked. No, 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 nobody want to see that. Who's Paris yeah. Jackson? Paris Jack- Michael Jackson's daughter. Um, I'm, talking about, I, I'm talking about the name you said before that. No. Uh, who? What is that? Uh, Billy? Oh, Chloe? Oh, oh Chloe. Billy Alex? Oh, nobody wants to see No, 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 no. Huh? No, no, no. no, no, no. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah. <laughs> you got the, shout out, Chris. You got the your digs. <laughs> <laughs> look, she do, but no. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to see uh, what the war life's uh, talking about. Uh, uh, my, uh, you, you know what, Billy? You know, you know, uh, you know. I look at Billy Eilish, and I, 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 when I, not like girls like born past like 1997. I like categorize them as like something close as like close to like a family member. So I look at Billy Eilish, and I go, "Oh, look, it's my like, it's my little cousin's best friend." <laughs> so I, that's what I look at it as. Like I my feel like if I knew people who like actually fuck with her, then I might feel that way. But like, this I don't. Yeah, nah, if I don't know you, bro, yeah, nah. Like if you're, yeah, because like what is it, two thousand twenty three? Yeah, you born in two thousand. That's it. I don't know. Two thousand one. Yeah. yeah, man, you you get smashed. Nah, the thing about it, the thing about it, like the thing about it, like she got a boyfriend, and that nigga was born in like nineteen ninety. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Nigga? Yeah, look, so the, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm sitting here and I'm seeing the yiddies. 
I don't see none of these dates on the screen. I just um <laughs> like that's the problem. <laughs> there lies the problem. It's just heavy. I don't know. The problem. Titties. I'm I, I don't care enough to do more research beyond that. Like if, if I yeah, said they good yeah. to go. Yeah. Then, hey. look, 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 she's twenty one. You can look at those titties. You can look at. Them. You can that's look all at I want to see, bro. You said the show got Chloe Bailey getting clapped, so that's one thing enough. But like if it, I'm just saying, is there more? I guess it. I'm, Nah, that's the only that's the only clip from the scene. Everybody, yeah, that's that's to see clip everybody that saw so far. It's five minutes into the first episode. That little mermaid? Nah, that's Hallie. Uh, that's Hallie. Hallie's that's the little mermaid. That's Hallie. She'll <laughs> never do that. Little mermaid is getting their cheese smoked. That'd be crazy. Should no, should that'll never happen. Oh but then like but then like Chloe did like an interview and she was like, like there was a balloon between her and dancing. When they was doing that shit, it's like in in those moments, it was like a oh, balloon. he's in the balloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I understood. Understood. Got you. Yeah, Franklin yeah. wasn't hitting Little Mermaid. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So like, she was like, I got the look. She was like, I was nervous. I haven't had that many sexual partners. I was like, look at this wholesome, look at this wholesome, nice, good guy. Like people look, Chloe Bailey fine, but but niggas be like, niggas don't realize she's like a good golly. Ass girl, <laughs> she's very much that might be what the brand is, bro. We don't know for sure. I, we don't know. We don't know. That's probably don't the know. brand. We don't know. She she gives off good golly. Be getting down. Be she getting she down. gives off G Willikers. <laughs> Where are they from? Where are the Bailey sisters from? Atlanta. All right, yeah. Well, we gonna find out. Yeah, as soon as, Atlanta. As soon as get out. You gonna spit the truth? <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Like her, her sisters dating a dating a YouTuber. Yeah. They went they went bowling with Blueface and Croissant, and she was just having a good time. I was like, "Get that girl away from those two niggas, please, <laughs> oh, please, you gotta, please get that girl away from that." Them. Is not good company. That's what I'm oh, saying. Man. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Beyonce has children to raise. She ain't got time to be watching <laughs> watching her two artists just do shit. That's probably what, I mean, man. Is. She got a we gang are, of kids too over there. She got like, yeah, she got three. Shout out over, man. God did, God did. She got three. I hate that long ass verse. I hate it so much. Oh my god. I hate it so much. The best, the best part about God did is the hook. <laughs> it's the best part. Hey, bro, I seen the video. Uh, in him is Friday. Yeah, oh, him, him, like getting. He was like doing just, I think, like just prepping shit to send out to people see if they want to make a song on it. And he was doing the one for God did. He just really sound like that. He's like, he's like a T Pain where that's just his voice. Yeah, he's not. He like new. He like the new version of Sanford where that they got these crazy. obscure ass voices. But that bro, shit, be- he, he's in an apartment with like nine microwaves and just hella shit stacked up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, Jamal. I've I've recently seen uh, BMF and uh, Charles fumbled the bag. Some crazy. <laughs> I don't know if y'all watched the one that came out today. Lucille was putting that shit on though. Huh? To Lucy, that's the wife, right? The mom. Yep. Hey, that, the mom fine, that bro. Oh, I was she fine. She, she nah, good. you ain't watched today. You, Damn, you, she, she thick as hell. Like, what, go, ahead, go ahead. I'm telling you. you I'm gonna I'm watch it when we get over here. No. Nah, nah. She came down the they had a family dinner. She came to the, Whoa. Had Chuck under pressure. Scared him off the table. Nigga. Nigga Mon- nah, Mon- That shit was so damn funny, man. At the uh the um the hotel with like the quarters and like the bed and shit. Nah, that shit had me crying, man. That shit is fun with the bag, bro. That shit is hilarious. All right, hold on. We're gonna, we gonna have a little debate here in a second. Hold on, nigga. Nigga, Monique. Me, video games started falling off. A lot of video games made today are nowhere near as good as they were back in the day when actually when when the companies actually cared about making video games. There's no game has a lot of replay value in my opinion. Yeah, sure. I, I know why this is the case though. You only getting forty percent of the game now. Most of the stuff they put in the DLC now. Video really games is not falling off. Why? Wait, when does Street Fighter Five come out? It's falling off. People saying, "What the f- game ain't even completed?" It's like, "Oh, we're gonna buy this anyway." So you got to answer what your wallets. 
basically, why would the companies innovate when they know you're going to eat the, the patty any way? There's not enough of us who's going to be like, hey, I'm not playing this game. So y'all, y'all better go make a better one. They should just put more effort into their game and make a better game. They need to release a good game from the start. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter that they you know you can squeeze Destiny more money too. out of people. That That's still the gaming companies being greedy. So therefore, that's video fact. games are falling off. How All right. So, I mean, I feel like this is like kind of a, a something we've all kind of noticed and definitely had opinions on as time has gone on uh, from, let's say, like the 360 era until now. Mm -hmm. Um Shit has definitely changed with the way that games are packaged and released. But do y'all feel like fair. they're getting worse as a whole, or do y'all feel like it's more like they're just kind of taking advantage of like what we'll spend money on, or is it both? Yeah, I think it's that because I think games like some games are better than ever. Like you can't sit here and tell me like after playing like Horizon and like God mm -hmm. of War and like we're about to get Spider Man two and like this fall, like games are clearly better than ever. And they look better than ever, but it's just like it's the whole business model, like microtransactions in the game and like. We'll put this game out and it's not finished. And we'll put out a big ass 45 gig patch day two. So it works properly for everybody. We're gonna put some some basic shit in. That's like uh that should be a part of the game, but that's that's gonna be DLC. We're breaking into parts. That's the thing with fighting games. Remember, fighting games used to get it. Everybody, every character's on the game, but you gotta fight and do like challenge towers or a complete story mode with every character on there to unlock characters. Now characters, additional characters and fighting games come as season passes and they stream, it, do it like that now. It's a little revisionist history on that though, because there was like four versions of Street Fighter 2 on the Sega Genesis. And the last one, the Championship oh, yeah. Edition had everybody on there. So it's kind of been a thing with them. Uh okay. Tekken, probably not so much, but it yeah, definitely Tekken, was a thing. Tekken and Mortal Kombat were never Street like that. Fighter. Yeah, well, Street Fighter. And what was the other one we played? Thing. What was the one with the weapons? We uh, with? Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's existed in some form, I guess, like mm -hmm. at least with Street Fighter. The other ones, no, but I think, a, um, I think a like a key point in this is like there's like not that many games that are like definitively ready. So there's a lot of games that are either rushed. Or they take too long. They're in development hell. They take too long to come out. Then they never come out. Like okay. like recent, like suit like the Suicide Squad game. We got we got gameplay from that like a month ago, mm -hmm. and and then like no like two again. months ago, and then like a week ago they was like it might not come out till twenty twenty four. Well, why are you showing me gameplay if you might not come out till twenty twenty four? The fan backlash. That's why I think. Yeah, it was it was based on it being a live service game. Like people weren't expecting that, and now they're upset with it. So. I mean, I don't know what they're gonna fucking rework. Like that's a that's a very like hard choice when you made a game yeah. that way to change it to something else. Mm, and then like we, and then like I don't, I don't, then like a lot of a lot of companies don't do don't do a lot to get us excited about video games. Like I don't remember the last E three I watched where like outside of like one game or like maybe two, I was like uh, hype, hype, hype. The, the game doesn't change now. Like E3 ain't, ain't what it used to be. Where like that's where it, um you would have to watch a stream from E3 to find out what the fuck was going on. Mm. Now it's just a date that the company schedule around in order to put out their shit. They're not necessarily mm. at E3 anymore. So we get state of plays, Nintendo Direct, and yeah, you get those year yeah. round now. So mm -hmm. and it's yeah. just and like, and it's way cheaper for those companies too to do mm. shit like that. And then it's like and then it's like I just like because of because of the because of how the world runs now, you gotta keep ex you gotta keep excitement up. And some companies aren't some game companies aren't good at keeping excitement up. That's why like most game companies they'll they'll give you a trailer six weeks before the game 2K. Like you'll get a 2K trailer like in August. The game is gonna come out like September 27th. You know what I'm saying? They're not gonna show you a 2K 2K24 trailer in February when that shit is coming out in October. Like it's not nah. You know what I'm saying? Like some companies ain't good at like, like a company will tell you like in June that this this game is coming next July or next August, and they gotta keep constantly showing. Prime example, prime example. My favorite, one of my favorite video games ever, probably one of my favorite video games ever, is Kingdom Hearts Two. There's okay. a 14 year gap between Kingdom Hearts Two and Kingdom Hearts Three. These niggas gave us so much. So much in between that that Kingdom Hearts 3 was just horrible. 
You know what I'm saying? It was just something like it was just. It, it was just. It was you just, were fucking uh, with three, Donnie. It was three. It was cool. You know what I'm saying? It was cool. It was short though, and it was just. It was just the. It was just the end to everything. Let me, That's let what me it get, felt like. Let it me ask you something. Kind though. of you gotta, all these loose ends. You gotta you gotta be honest with yourself right now. Do you feel like after that much of a wait? And just like where, where you were in life at two and where you are in life, like when three came out, was it possible for anything to possibly meet your expectations after that long of a, of a gap? No, but I'll tell you this. Certain things would have kept me happy about it. Like number, like number one, like number one in Kingdom Hearts two, you get like 20 key. Like there's like so many keyblades. In Kingdom Hearts okay. three, you get like nine. <laughs> All right, no, that's not that's not you cool. get like 11. Like, you get like a, it's like little anecdotes like that. You could just be like, nah, just, just like imagine if Kingdom Hearts 3 came out and you could get every keyblade from one to three. You know what I'm saying? Now, they might not have been able to do that on the Xbox One and the PS4. I don't know why, but if like Kingdom, like they, they, nigga, we got Kingdom Hearts 4 footage like a, like a year and a half ago. So it's like, what? Yeah, oh, we yeah, did. They, they did show something like yeah, something and like usually they don't show. Nigga, usually you don't get Kingdom Hearts for you would like judging like a fourteen year gap between two thousand five and two thousand nineteen. I didn't expect Kingdom Hearts four footage till two thousand and twenty six, <laughs> but they showed no, that bitch in like twenty twenty one. Square Enix is one of them companies too, where like development times don't mean shit to them. They'll mm-hmm. they'll sell some shit. Until they want to put it out, but if they'll, it, wait, they'll wait. Yeah, Square Enix will wait eight years to give you some mid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wait, they'll wait eight yeah, years. I mean, Force Spoken has been probably what, three years since we first seen it until when it came out. Yeah, three, four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that's on like the newest sale right now too. But it's, when it's that bleeding like, the money. That shit is not doing well at all. Yeah, that's when you know, like, because I, I saw that uh that Saint Tro game was on sale for like. Dude, that shit might be like thirty. That shit look, the trailer for that shit look wacky. And I was like, I'm not playing this. This shit look wacky. Yeah. yeah, like whenever it's like if it goes like twenty bucks, fifteen or something, or if if it, if it, if they make it like you know they throw it on like what's the uh, the plus tier or whatever. Like yeah, I'll play it then. But down with this shit. Man, where, I, mean, I was excited for that game, and then like I think what was it you Blake? You told me to go watch that uh that fifteen minute gameplay video. And that shit like a PS4 game, PS3 game really. For uh, Saints Row. Mm-hmm. That shit was yeah, crazy. Shit. Yeah, like in some in some games you wait for, and I'm be like, you gonna put this shit out six months after the last one? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, yo, way two y'all generations this, ago, bro. Like, yeah, it's like, that's like shit. No, this this should should not be sixty nine ninety nine, bro. But it's a crazy got- industry, bro. Like for real, like, you think about it, like they 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 work on these things for two to three years. You got I don't know how many hundreds of people behind the scenes, like they're making their livelihood off of this shit. Um. We get the product at the end of it, and it's like, bro, like this shit is ass. Like, um, you might have had some plan to keep making money on this down the line, but it's like, nah, y'all need to shut the shit up now. And like, now those jobs are just fucking gone. I don't know. Like, the whole entire thing is just fucking crazy when you think about it. Like, as as how many moving pieces there are involved with it mm-hmm. for us to get like something that's fun at the end of the line. Like, I don't and know. Then on, and then on the flip side, you got like, you got like niggas. You need, you got like shit like the Telltale games, which are amazing, right? But then yep. like you find out that you find out that they they feeding the employees bread and water. Oh. <laughs> they, pay, they, pay, they pay them niggas six dollars an hour to develop the game. That's the other yeah. issue too. You talking about like, hey man, y'all didn't y'all didn't miss these bugs? Y'all let this shit come out looking like this? It's like these motherfuckers been working ninety hour weeks for eight months. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> the craziest shit. Like. A bunch you hear of the different... stuff about like Blizzard and stuff. Yeah, these niggas working ninety hour work weeks and and getting their nuts tickled by their boss, like while they trying to make the <laughs> game and stuff. So I was like, bro, like of course the game go have bugs. Like, dog, this my boss been trying to touch my nipples, man. I can't focus on. No, that I heard game. there was getting motherfuckers pregnant it's, over you got, like, unwillingly. So shit, you got multiple industries there. overworking their staff. You got like nigga, nigga Marvel is like overworking their staff. You know what I'm saying? We, oh, I'm hell not, yeah, we know the CGI. I'm not surprised been... Bob Iger was like, "Hey, fam, these these cameos gotta stop." Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I don't feel bad for them folks. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, uh, what, like, you talking about I, some of the visual effects people? Yeah, because like they don't. So hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, My uh, mind, you know, I've looked none of this up. This is just just off the cuff. They don't work for Marvel. They're, they're all right. 
They're a Thai <laughs> studio who contracted on because they, that was a, a big amount of money and it was a good look for them. And when they found out the amount of work they had to do, then they started bitching and complaining, like, oh my God, it's too much work for us and shit like that. Versus like look a game you. studio where it's like, cool, I'm at Paradox Interactive. Like, I'm going to go make fucking Psychonauts or whatever the fuck. And um, then they're like, hey, man, uh, the, the, the publisher saying we got to have this shit out quarter four. So, uh, do what you got to do to make that happen. And you, know, you end up just living at your fucking office eating fucking Lunchables for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I feel uh, what you're saying. I feel what you're saying on the visual effects thing. Yeah. It's just when it's just when you have a nigga like Kevin Feige who like who like knows that you're here to get overworked, he'll definitely yep. overwork you. <laughs> and that's you know the what? Um, I this, it's always sticks in my mind when I hear these complaints about them too. Um, this goes in their favor. I remember I seen like a um, an on the set like how it was made type of thing of uh, I think it was Guardians two of the scene when like Yondu's like walking through the ship and just killing everybody and shit like that, and he was like walking on a platform that was blue screen and the entire set was blue screen, so that means someone had to make every fucking thing in there. Everything yeah. was blue around him except him. Mm-hmm. Like, fam, fam, Spider Man No Way Home is made a billion dollars but all of us every single one of us wrote spider-man no way home all of us we all wrote the script we all wrote the script they, like 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 literally like two weeks after far from home came out niggas like wrote the script of far of uh of the next movie and it happened it happened the set picks Andrew Garfield will be like, I don't know. What y'all, I, Andrew Garfield was like, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. I really don't. He was just on TV. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. Hey, <laughs> the, the, I think the one before the Spider-Man movie before that might have cost us more. Far from oh, home? home with all the shit Mysterio was on. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that movie is horrible. Oh, that movie was that movie, that movie was kind of boof. Oh, it's, it's the worst of the trilogy movie. by listen. far. Listen, there are parts oh, in there that I really, really it's like. Sick, really, it's definitely really the worst of the trilogy. I ain't gonna lie about that. I don't think yes. The one with the most replay value is Homecoming. Homecoming is one of the best MCU. Nah, movies. it don't hit the same after you done seen like the flip of like him figuring out that, oh, you Spider-Man shit. After you know that part, like going in, like it, it's not the same. But shout out to uh, his chick he has. Oh, Lauren Harrier. Woo! Shout out Clay Thompson. Her name? Jamal, you shout out, yeah, that is Clay Thompson. Shout out, shout out, Clay Thompson. Thompson. It's Mr. They're not Anthem? together no more, I think, but that was that was his girl. That was his girl. He, he had There's... her on the boat. Mm-hmm. Ooh, all right, Clay. All mm-hmm. right. You know, I'll like, fuck with WSU you, like that. But you can tell she's fine because she's skinty and she's fine as hell. Uh, <laughs> but not like Far From Home. Right, far From Home, is it, it ain't rewatchable. You know what I'm saying? No Way Home is rewatchable because you got them two old niggas in there. And uh, it's always... The most replayable part in that movie is uh, Peter figuring out that he could be Doctor Strange with geometry. <laughs> that shit was like, funny. I know math. I was like, oh, that shit was funny. This, this is just, oh, okay. Yeah, because that's, that's Peter Parker's shit. You know what I'm saying? That is like Spider-Man comic book TV show shit. All the he just realizes... Oh, yeah. When he just when he just realizes, oh shit, oh yeah, this is this. Let me do this. They keep yes. giving Peter broke ass fire ass shoes like he can afford those. Yeah, but like nigga, they be giving him good shoes. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah, the ones on in uh, No Way Home. Mm, I don't know what the fuck Spider Man Four is gonna be like. I don't know what it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, because you know he finna get another trilogy. Oh shit! He, hey, Sp- Spider Verse is uh in a few months. That's June. Yeah, Spider Verse in a few months. Too. Are y'all going to see Shazam? Well, Blake, you're not going to see Shazam. Uh, why, why do y'all let him do this? <laughs> Yo, y'all, y'all got to stop believing Jamal. Like, for real. Like, this is not cool. Well, I mean, I mean, I, well, Tyrell's not going to see. Not going yeah, to see. Exactly. Tyrell ain't going to see. He's, he's yeah, not nah. going to see. You can't make nah. him do nothing. Man. Yeah, nah, let me Blake reiterate again it. before, like, there's more smuttery on my Yeah, Blake, Blake goes. Blake goes. I do not. I, I don't have a problem with DC. I'm a fan of DC. I will go see this movie. My whole complaint was that they have done a lot of fuckery, and I'm not going to let them hurt me. Like I'm not going to just trust them that, like they're gonna uh, let's say capitalize on it. Shazam movie might be fire. They're not going to capitalize on this. That's how I feel about them. They might, mm-hmm. but I'm just I'm not going to. Because the first one was happen. good. 
The first Shazam movie. I was agree. Good. I agree. And I feel like this was this movie was too far like along for when like all their big like cuts started happening for them to like back off of this. Especially mm-hmm. after like because Black Adam was probably done at that point. Um and that I think they probably hoped that these two would tie back together, even though the rocks is like not fucking with that. Um so yeah, Rocky, I, I just Rocky, I don't trust Rocky. them as a staff. That makes mm, any sense. A staff, a record label, and a crew. You, I, uh, I fuck with them as a crew, but as a staff <laughs> in a record label, no. Like DC, go the hell. DC, uh, niggas, cinematic hey, universe. James, go the hell James gonna piss people off the other day when he was like, "I'm directing the Superman movie." Niggas was like, "No, why?" Yep. <laughs> and obviously, niggas, yeah, give him grace. Let's see. It. Get, like he wild as fuck getting out there saying all them titles for the shits is like you don't even have nothing not a dollar assigned to I'm just go saying. ahead go off um but um if it works out I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be as happy as hell yeah, if it don't like, work out I'm gonna be I, like wow is crazy. look at that them tweets is crazy he told that story about his brother and his dad's birthday then he said then he said like basically said the plot of the Superman movie and everybody was like nigga this is Man of Steel <laughs> 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 nigga this is Man of Steel what are you doing? Yeah, when he when he was tweeting that, or he was like, "Oh man, I didn't even know the release date was his dad was dad's birthday." That's why I put in the docket, Blake. Uh, is LeBron and James Gunn the same person? Oh, this was just, this just happened. You calling? Yeah, Cap? this just happened today. Yeah, you calling Cap? Yeah, I, I that uh, nigga's Kevin, bro. He know he put that look, look, I, I, You don't forget minute, your dad's long, birthday. It, it hold up. It depends on how long his dad been dead though. If his dad been dead like thirty years, he that's might, not crazy. In LeBron James Gunn is like old. sixty. <laughs> now, if his dad died like five years ago, nigga, come on, come on now, <laughs> that's fresh on your mind. His birthday, <laughs> but if that nigga died in like ninety two, uh, <laughs> he been locked in on this last Guardians movie, like saying how much shit he can do before he gets fired. Oh god, he forgot about his dad. That and Peacemaker. That's, that's crazy. I'll go see Shazam yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm probably gonna go on Sunday too. Did y'all see the red carpet pictures? pictures? My fault. Go ahead. Peacemaker. See the. the, Oh, what you talking about? Is Peacemaker a part of his larger universe? We don't know. The tone of that is well. No, there. Well, there's a Peacemaker show going to be on HBO Max because Peacemaker is going to be in the uh, the Waller show. Oh, okay. So the show's yeah. already on HBO Max. You're saying uh-huh. there's another season of it coming. Yeah, no, well, so when the Waller show comes out, like he's gonna Peacemaker's gonna be a part of that. So now that listen, that Waller show is gonna I I can book I can book that getting Emmy nomination. Does he got Viola Davis back for that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, back. Who else would they there be? <laughs> then Apple said he's not fucking with him. So I mean the big name actors have turned away James Gunn. Look. Off you she just got a. She just got her. She just got her e guide. You better go. You better pay her whatever she want to be a man. That's the other problem. Man, you better give her whatever the fuck she wants to play a man. The wall. That might be. That might. The waller might be his saving grace. All right. <laughs> like Amanda, like <laughs> Viola Davis, might be his Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> wow. She, she might be that. Wow, she might be there. I seen a report where like uh, Tom Cruise watched The Flash, and he was like, "This is what uh, this is what uh, the movies need." <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. I don't I don't Over know him. What, I have no idea what that means. I don't know what the fuck that. Means. That's Mr. Practical Stunt. So I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> I know that movie was yeah. doing that. Niggas was like, "Oh, that means this movie gonna be fine." I was like, "I think the movie gonna be good," but I don't. With Tom Cruise, that can mean anything, nigga. Yeah, literally anything. <laughs> that that can mean most. Anything. I don't know. That, that man really hung onto the side of a plane as it took off, like for a fucking movie. Mm. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Ben Jumped Affleck, out of airplanes for a movie. Yeah, Ben Affleck said Justice League was the worst experience he's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to go home to his kids. Yeah, forced him into becoming an alcoholic. <laughs> I just woke up one day next to J Lo. It was terrible. That nigga, that nigga, that that's crazy that a movie had you rethinking your whole life. Your whole life. Yeah, because he was talking about those reshoots, them Justice League reshoots. The reason have y'all watched like the Snyder Cut more than once? Yeah, I watched it. Like I watched it. Oh, it came out in 2021, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it came out in 2021. I watched, I watched it twice that year, and then like last yeah, summer I rewatched. 
I watched it. I was just like, let me just cut this bullshit off. I watched the ending once and I restarted it a second time, but I didn't finish it the second time. Because mm, I woke like I watch I, the, the reason why I watched it is because like I woke up at like four a.m. Mm-hmm. and I couldn't go back to sleep. I was like, okay, let me, right. okay, let me put something on that'll like get to get me to eight thirty. <laughs> that's what I was, and that's what I watched. Give me the eight thirty. Yes, I watched. I watched Superman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Batman. Uh, hit hit a game breaker on uh fucking <laughs> on oh, Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. They fuck Steppenwolf they beat, up. They beat the shit out of Steppenwolf. Oh, apparently, oh, and then like and then like Zack Snyder hopped up this week with like full tweeted full circle and like uh, put that video of Dark Seeds voice. I don't know what what is going on. Oh, he he he's got he's revealing something soon, but yeah, I don't know what but I'm like I'm man. like I'm like fam, very you cryptic. Get, you giving me dark. I have a cameo now? channel coming. <laughs> That's what it is. A cameo channel. Like, that would be hilarious. Like, a, like you could just get a cameo from Dark Sea, but not a movie. Yeah. Like you can buy a house from <laughs> Bella Anderson. You can do anything. You know what I'm saying? This guy, man. The fact, though. You know, she does sell houses here. now. Yeah. Yeah, you can get. You can go. Uh, you can go work for Roxy Reynolds Trucking Company. <laughs> 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 that's cra- that's crazy. That's the craziest thing ever. That's the crazy. Roxy Reynolds owning a trucking trucking company is almost as crazy as Jada Fire being finer than she was. Being like Jada Fire is hella fine now. Yes, She's way better. Yes. <laughs> she and apparently she one. like mean and old, but she fine. <laughs> Damn, yeah, because I wonder how old she's got to be, like, what, mid-40s? Yeah, she's, like, 46. So, like, during the pandemic, uh, I think Joe Budden was, like, on IG Live with her. And, like, she was like, I, she was like, I fucked Drake. And then Drake just started, like, roasting her. What? <laughs> yes. He was in the comments, like, he was, like, he was in the comments, like, yo, Yo, back when back when the back when the Apple computers had the big back had the big backs, we used to go crazy watching Jada Five footage. We <laughs> he was just like hitting her with jokes in the comments. And after that, she was like, Man, fuck Drake. That was so funny. It was so funny. He followed the bag. Oh not really. Not really. Yeah, no, I guess when it's not him, when it's Drake's, him, yeah, Drake's it's not fucking really, porn yeah. stars. <laughs> uh, he has a kid by one. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, nude model, uh, yeah, ish. cam model, yeah, a uh, uh, Jace. Uh, she got the name of one, too. What's her name again? I forgot her name, Sophie, Sophie Brazo, Brazo, or something. That oh, or something. Sound porny. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Like, what you call her? Like, he called her like, he called her like a fluke on the record, and not a co parent. <laughs> That's so funny. She got his baby living in Paris. Yeah, hey, as she should. Mm-hmm. Probably for the better, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Jokes is gonna fly over here. <laughs> I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah. Donna should not be in the states at all. <laughs> she, she's, she should be France and fucking Toronto. I don't know why Drake be having this nigga in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, let him run around that Mbappe jersey, man. Just yeah. yeah, bro. Just let him. Just let him be a. Just let him be a soccer fan. That the, the Adonis. The Adonis make these. These yeah, like these are the type of women Drake be, will give babies to. Like women like that. Like women who some. Uh, his next baby mama gonna be some Ethiopian who live in like fucking uh, Vancouver or some That's, shit. It's gonna be like Tanaje. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and yeah, he like, was yeah. pre- uh pregnant. Niggas will be sick. <laughs> Niggas will be sick. Niggas see a Chloe Bailey sex scene and get depressed. I'm like, fam. I'm like, I'm like, God. I'm like, bro. Like we, you know, what I'm saying. I know we like, you know, so we lust and have fun of a fine ass woman. But at some point, we have to go get some pussy. Nah, at some like- point. Feel like Melo watching BMF for power. Power. I hey hey, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. All of us should take acting lessons because at least we know we can play with Lala's nipple on TV. Jeez, oh, he awful, just, even then, uh, uh, Wood Harris brother, he's smashing the Asian chick on there now. Like, die. everybody, why? Thinks he's on BMF, why? Why? It's super random. Yeah. Why? 
Why, why do I need to see this? Hey, the supported actor's been bringing it home on BMF. I will say that. Hey, but, um, hey, Mo, like hey, Donnell Rollins hey. is doing his damn thing on there. But Donnell Rollins is playing Donnell Rollins, and he's yeah. doing great at it. <laughs> God damn it. They got some terrible actors on. It's just the 50 verse, bro. Like, t- add it. Yo, I don't, know who, hey, I don't know. I might be with you guys now. What's his, his, Lil Meech might not be a good actor. Oh, he's, 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 no, bro. he's, he's shitty. No, bro. Mean? He wasn't, he was wasn't a good actor from the beginning. What are you talking about? He just look inside. He just looked like his daddy. That's why he got to roll. He just God, like, he looks just like the nigga. Yeah, Carisha like was daddy. awful. Yeah, get oh, that was, oh, that was so hilarious. Oh, that was that was that was so hilarious. Cash doll, cash doll. Uh, I, didn't, cash I didn't think cash doll was that bad. Cash bad. Not here. Yeah, yeah, no, you see how strong Lamar was when he choked her out? Well, I, one I didn't. Well, this back in season one, I didn't know that that was cash doll. Um, so I'm gonna say that that in enough is in itself is like she wasn't bad on there. Uh, yeah, Lamar. Yeah, was, I didn't think cash doll was bad. <laughs> No, she choked him out, broke a vase over his head, kicked him in the nuts twice, and she she gave him like three good right hooks. And he, he still choked her out, shit. killed her. Yeah, nah, he was coked up. So yeah, never mind. That makes sense now. You gotta watch that. Nah, they weren't even coked. They were smoking crack. They play. They that got the most like, hilarious. You smoke. They got Lamar have like the most hilarious fucking flashback. Like him just sitting there pondering fucking life. That, that should make you laugh. I yeah, Lamar on there. Lamar's hilarious. Lamar, Lamar choked out his. He killed his baby mama, and then he after he killed, him, he was like, "Shit, <laughs> <laughs> fuck!" Like, what? Mm. His, his daughter called and was like, oh, "Your mama can't come to the phone right now." What? <laughs> Why are y'all together? <laughs> oh, she tried. She tried to get that nigga on that crap. First of all, okay, that scene's not realistic because she hit this nigga with a face. And then exactly. a bigger face. Dog, she kicked and him in the did, nuts like three times. Yes, nigga did not yes. let go of her throat at all. Bro, he, there's no, no, bro. Like he is not an android. That is a grown. That is a man. No, y'all see what the fuck he been on? He just fresh off the, the fucking table in the morgue and went to go ass beating spree across Detroit. Oh, and the only, fu- the funniest scene is when Lamar walked. Chili dogs. The funniest scene is when Lamar walked in the church, and Snoop Dogg became Snoop Dogg. That's the funniest scene. <laughs> I said, get out. He was like, "Nigga, get out!" I was like, "Oh, this is oh, this is cinema." So <laughs> bring the East Side back out, me. <laughs> it's amazing. Y'all think this show gets? It probably got one more season in it, huh? Yeah, you know? no, this show. I knew this. Probably show two, did. two more. Um, so based on the documentary, there's a whole storyline to be told about like their time in L.A. and then obviously Atlanta is the big one. They got okay. five episodes. I think they 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 probably got. Uh, two seasons less than well, them. I mean, it's 50 and two, stars. two seasons, three so, max. For the most part, 50's probably fifty's gonna end it like when how he wants to. They're not gonna cancel the show. Fifty's gonna end it how he wants to end it because like he has stars in the palm of his hand. Like they don't have an agreement anymore. They don't. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. I still, I still think he'll end it how he wants to end it because like ain't nothing no stars really. No stars. Uh, well, blind spot is coming back. I think isn't Yellow Jacket on Stars? Nigga, who Yellow Jacket? Do you guys on know Stars? anybody that watches that show? What? Blind spotting. I've Black, only seen like uh, ask for that show. Why I watch the show. No, there's oh, one yeah. other show about some uh she's the like dude, a cop and like a dude New England cop or something like Earl. that. I went on blind spot and I went to college with. Well, that's random as fuck. Yeah, that's like my that's my dog though. So okay. like I watch it because of my homie. You know what I'm saying? And like the, the little poetry shit they do, the little like when they like it be scenes and they be like <laughs> rhyming and shit. Like he used to be on the debate team. So like I used so like when I see that, I'm just used to like being around that because I used to see that a lot. Yeah, I just see the mass. I'm like all I see is like just mixed bitches in Oakland and somebody in jail. Yeah. The idea that's Oakland. The chick cute on there though, so I'm like, oh, I want to watch Oakland. this. Is she cute enough for me to watch an episode? Hmm. That's funny. You the first person heard of her since they watched that. Nah, that well, first of all, like well, first of all, Jasmine Stevens Jones is fine. Uh, um, she's mixed. Yeah. And like I don't know, it's kinda like it's kind it's kinda like a show that's like 
really like singular. It's not like a, it's not like a broad a bro, like a a broad scale type of show because like it's really basically a girl coping with the fact that her her baby daddy's in jail and how they how they how they family deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But it's based in Oakland. Okay, so, I'm thinking of High Town. Yeah, so I was like, I don't know, I don't know if they, I don't know. I've been actually like the show doesn't impress me this much. I I've been liking season two of Bel Air. I haven't started season two yet. Didn't you say Blake? You thought oh. they blew their load season one? I think they did. I'm not really fucking. Well, I, know, well, it, I would it say got renewed this. for a season three. Yeah, I would tell you this episode four. Might be the best episode of the series. Episode four is really, 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 really good. <laughs> really good. Yeah. They do, they do like the thing about the show is like they do pivotal moments in the sitcom with great detail. You know what I'm saying? They don't overdo it. You know what I'm saying? Like the Will's dad episode, they didn't oh they, they didn't go over the top with that shit. It was real, you know what I'm saying? It was taken care of. But the, in episode four, they like it's like certain it's like certain things from certain episodes of the sitcom that they just casually like like lead into. They don't just you know present it in an over the top ass way. So I I fuck with it. Was that when uh, Jazz like lent his car to Hillary and? Post yeah, that was him. that was funny. Yeah, yeah, that was that was funny. that four though, or is that three? Is that, if it's not, that's like that's like one or two. That's one, oh, one, one or two. Three is the three is the protest. Four is the aftermath of all of that. Okay, I haven't watched that yet. Man, yeah, three is the protest. Four is the aftermath of all of that. All right. Okay, All right. Oh shit, damn! Two eleven. Shit, we yeah, we don't need to get up out of here. All hey right. man, appreciate you, Donnie man, for uh. Nigga, I will come back in next week. Just I need to see Tyrell. Pull up on Tyrell. Press him. Yes, yes. <laughs> Talking about, I'm off next week. I pull All up. Right. It's gonna be I me can... and Tyrell here. I think next week. Oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I might not be out of here. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I might be here next week. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I'll try to. I'll try live to from live from Canada. We'll a hey, live from somewhere. We'll see. <laughs> We put my business out there, man. But uh, we'll see. But hey, man, thanks for pulling put up. Tell the people you know too. God oh, yeah, damn. Yeah, always. Yeah. Plug, plug your uh, plug your show, Donnie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's your boy Donnie Luce D L N N Y L U C H E. You can find me. Was Donnie Luce Donnie Luce on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you can follow me. You can also follow my podcast slash show page. Uh, it's called Hanging with the Crew. You can catch it on all of your streaming services. We are on the road to episode 100. I just realized that I recorded 83 episodes of this shit. I don't number those motherfuckers. So, like, I counted them like a week ago. And I was like, oh, shit. I'll be, like, by July, I'll be at episode 100. So, yeah, we're on the road to 100. Shit, yeah. stay with us, man. Yeah, we four away. Well, three away, actually. But, yeah. Three? Y'all not at one, y'all not at one yet? We're a hundred in the feed, but not yeah, on but numbered, like, numbered episodes. Now, nah. oh, okay, okay. hey man, hey man, thanks for pulling up, bro. Hey man, you welcome yeah. anytime, bro. Appreciate always, you. always, 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 always. Appreciate y'all. All right, then we punching out right, ninety six. We out.